Hello, I realized last time I did the Spencer dance wrong. From Uptown Burbank, Harmontown is now in session. Somebody make a meme out of that shit. Yo, Spencer, where'd you go? Let's bring up our game master, Spencer Crittenden. With this bag of holding. What you got in that bag? Books, books, books and dice. Gonna play D&D, gonna go real nice. That's all. What you got in that sack? Just some games and the shit to get back on Is track. it true that you're going to roll some dice? It's true, man. It's true that I got head lice. That's a parasite on your head. Uh, uh, you, you should see a doctor. Let's bring up your mayor, Dan Harmon. Yo, 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 yo. The beat rolls through me. I'm an artist. I'm a poet. I fucked your mama and she didn't even know it. I'm a stealth fucker. I roll in, I got bad luck or something. When I go in, I'm, I got a tiny little wiener so she didn't know. It's like a cave. Hear me blow. Yo, echo. It's not your mama's pussy that's the problem. <laughs> boy, oh boy. You guys threw me. Cause, uh, what, what? No, no, no. I, I, that, that sounded accusatory. That sounded blameful and shameful. I'm just saying. But rap is more tameful than it would have been if I hadn't been overshadowed by professional rappers, Rachel Maddow. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Rachel, do do a, do a rap as Rachel Maddow. All right. Yo, 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 yo. I got a long neck, and my head's in the stars. Rachel Maddow coming at you tonight. I got some left-leaning news to make you feel all right. In spite of Nazis taking over the USA. I'm popular, not because I'm gay. It's just the reason you can trust me. Don't fuck with me. I got a, a really long neck. So I can see better than you. What's going on? Rachel Maddow. <laughs> I haven't watched her in a while. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Kill Zach. Uh, Zach uh, McKeever. On, Did I just on, out on Rachel movies. Maddow? Well, you, you certainly outed her as having a long neck. No, people know that. And she, like, she celebrates it, I think, with her. If you were ashamed of your very long neck, you would not wear what Rachel Maddow wears. This is not me objectifying her. I, I, this think, is like, I think you're certainly neck shaming. I think he's neck celebrating. I'm neck. I'm, I, I like like I believe she is. I'm neck celebrating. Now, if somebody now somebody <laughs> now we've learned from our what the next thing that happens is that Rachel is doing a an AMA and somebody says Dan Harmon says you have a shamefully long neck and that you dress <laughs> like you, you know be it. And what are your comments on that? And then we're beefing. Oh well, now we're beefing. Beefing with Maddow. <sighs> <laughs> now we're in, a, we're, we're in a Reservoir Dogs crossfire with uh, uh, Ron Jeremy and Rachel Maddow. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's the danger of, of opening your show with rapping. But I, I've, I've found that, that, that opening the show with a little freestyle gets my uh, energy up. Yeah. Whereas it's a classic it, improv. It would be the up. sound of like thunderous applause. <laughs> Can, I, can, do you have a burp in the chamber right now, Dan? Can you do a word burp? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it goes. Because Church and I do a lot of word burping, and we try to get Steve Agee to, to uh, do a thing where he just burps words, and it's hard to do like multi-syllabic word burps. And one burp, I want it, 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 If you can pull this off, you'll be my hero. If you can word burp, White House aides. <laughs> I have to swallow air. <coughs> White House AIDS. No. <laughs> AIDS had a little bit of vomit drop <laughs> coming up oh. on it. 
Yeah. Just once I haven't can done someone, that in a while. Just once can someone burp women's rights? For God's <laughs> sake. Try, try to burp w- women's rights. <laughs> uh, well, how have you guys been? We had a Thanksgiving weekend. What did you guys do? Let's start with Spencer. I went to Dino's. Uh, yeah, it was good. I uh, I wanted to like make a recipe to bring there, but then I decided to just bring Coke. Uh, not like the drug, like uh, the drink. And it went over really well. People were like, man, I love this party, but the only thing to drink is hard liquor <laughs> and wine. And then I was like, I got you. And then people were digging it. And I was like, yeah, this was the right move. He, uh, he made a lot of good food. It was good. It was, uh, there wasn't a lot of crazy people there, which there are occasionally. So it was a real fun time. What do you feel about his garlic levels as a chef? Um, they're high, but that's what I like. I, I, I'd say the garlic levels in the Thanksgiving dinner were lower than normal. There's usually, Dino usually makes like Greek food to go with like the Thanksgiving food. So like he'll make a turkey and then he'll make like some crazy beef stew stuff. And uh, he didn't really have any of that. It was just traditional Thanksgiving stuff, which I was thankful for. I mean, I, you know, I like Greek food, but Thanksgiving. Yeah. Dan- Jeffrey? Uh-huh. Yeah, let's, let's go to you. Oh, me. Yeah. Well, I went to Florida with Cody and visited with my parents, which is uh, I haven't been down to Florida in a long time to, to visit the parents. And we, we our main activity was Balderdash, uh, which is like it, it's a it's we my family is like we we walk a razor's edge as a tribe. Like we, we're <laughs> not we're, we're we don't have unconditional love like lo- love 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 is. In the Harmon family, is a it's a loose knit alliance of of nefarious bounty hunters uh, who are all <laughs> just trying to make sure that uh, that 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 the galaxy doesn't doesn't get plunged into war. But uh, it, it it it's and so if you b- break out Monopoly or Trivial Pursuit, you're you could be asking for trouble. How big was, how big was the squad? It was you and Cody just, and just the, the four of us. Really? So was, yeah. And. Uh, but balderdash i've found for my family is this just amazing it's the, it's every man for himself no you know that's an outdated no expression sorry two of them were women that were out for themselves um w- ladies be out for yourselves uh don't, uh, thank god they finally got that message from someone they could trust um <laughs> the uh ball, ball, but balderdash is like there's no teams and there's also any any time pressure is self imposed. We decided after a while let's let's take no longer than two minutes to write an answer. R- refresh my memory. Balderdash is what you you, you lie about a thing. And There's, t- you have to figure yeah. out who's 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 telling the truth. It, or who's it, lying. It, it, Do it, they it, give you one real definition, or you got to? There's there's a word, and you have to guess the definition. Well, but. I think I can I can just knowing what Jeff knows. I think I can explain it f- 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 fast to him by saying it's basically the Leonard Malton movie guide game. Right. But there's five more categories than movies. Right. And you can just. The way we play it, you can just pick movies. So it could be a, a definition oh. of a word, or right? A de- so there's acronyms. Like, so it'll just be a jumble of letters. That's my least favorite one because I feel like I'm doing homework. Like I, I just <laughs> feel like I'm not. You know, it's not about creativity. It's just like I H C, and then you, 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 the people just write International Housing Committee. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, I hate. Uh, Carp, <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 and it, the cool thing, the genius of Balderdash, as far as the actual publishers of the game, the, what what they really did right, in my opinion, is they clearly, um, they, the, the, there's real answers. There's one real answer on the, 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 you know, IHC does stand for something in the real world out there somewhere. Um, it, it, but, it, but also there's all these movies that no one's ever seen. So the, the title. Will be like blue, um, blue marble babies, and like there's some movie out there called Blue Marble Babies. You don't know if it's like Dollywood or uh, bo- bo- Bollywood or Dollywood. <laughs> Dollywood could, but maybe or I Dollywood. think they've started to greenlight more projects uh, this fiscal quarter. Uh, we're pulling for Dollywood. They're, I don't know if they're going to catch up to Bollywood, but um, the the it, it, it you don't know where it's from. You just know that there is a movie out there called The Blue Marble Babies. the The genius of the Balderdash publishers is that whoever they had write the real answer, which might be a, it's 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 a it's a it's a log line for the movie Blue Marble Babies. 
and and they have the people that write them. They write them in kind of a they, like a a a, a, fr, a, fr, a, fr, a fuck. Fuck Shrap. Shrap is Rob Shrap is here. Yeah, I uh, let him in. Hello, Rob. Happy Thanksgiving, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there's Happy no camera over here, right? There's no <laughs> church. Is there a way? Can we no, there's not. You don't want. You Can don't want to disrupt. Well, there's no. This isn't about I was, you. Jeff, I was trying. I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> I was looking though. Maybe you will have better luck. We were trying to find the Balderdash game so we could play it live on stage. I thought it was something that we I, 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 you, we could do a round tonight to test it, but I really actually I think it would be a really fun it. game. I think that Benson basically plays the Leonard Malton movie game on his movie podcast. Getting Doug. Nope. No, Doug, he plays it on Doug Loves Doug. Movies. Doug, okay. Sorry, I got it mixed up. It doesn't matter. It's a different podcast network. We don't care if they live or die. And to tell you the truth, if it was a choice between them uh, dying and us uh, saving some bread for, I don't know, Cameron Esposito or uh, uh, one of our one of our tribe, like what are we the supposed Doe to do? The Boys, you know, it's kill or be killed in the podcast wars. Yeah, valuable Warby Parker dollars are being bow- battled over. <laughs> so Dan, so it was you, Cody, your mom, and your dad stuck in, in the uh, the confines of. Florida. Yeah. And how'd it go? Did it was great. It was really great. Uh, and my parents have a little tiny electric boat that um, they they live in a neighborhood <laughs> of. Uh, Wait, they have, they have an electric boat? Yeah. My parents moved or Wisconsinites that moved to Florida. That was that's all, that's the dream of every Wisconsinite. You don't go to California because California has drugs, foreign people and is going to fall into the sea. That's so what you go to Florida. For, yeah. <laughs> A drug-free, all-American, totally globally shielded, uh, absolutely no natural disasters uh, imminent. Um, so they, they, but it's all about boat culture there. My parents moved into a little neighborhood that's kind of, you know, upper middle class retirement suburb with, although I don't know if that's true anymore. So save your flame wars. Um, when you fact check this, but there's like canals, there's neighborhoods of Florida that, where everyone has a canal in their backyard instead of like an alley where you'd have like an alley because you're a dirty, urban, horrible break dancer. You, you, you have you have streets. I've been accused of that before. The and then and then the non-address facing conduit is an alley. How, how do Only we, instead of crack pipes, there's manatee. How do we play Balderdash? Live right now, we would we would have to we would have to out. find a balderdash a set of cards probably like a, just any 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 card from any balderdash or just like a movie title. If you at home have one, take a picture of it and send it to uh, the Harmontown Twitter. We can play it. We'll play it with our guest when he when he's like 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 yeah. we can we can try to figure it out. Let's 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 make an action item. Okay, if somebody out there. Uh, in our crowdsourcing community, can isolate, let's say, a balderdash card, so that such so that we can see a question side and an answer side well, for but it. Only we can see it, but the crowd can't see it. No, the crowd can see it. Oh, we won't be able to see it. I got you. So I if someone, that. I would say, let's just make that an action item, and then maybe our crew can, if somebody like. <sighs> Because otherwise, I'll just be talking about it all night. Well, okay, let, let's put that out into the ether. But how did you get along with your uh, mom and dad? How did that all go down? Was it healing? I wouldn't say it was healing, but I would say it was triumphant. <laughs> we didn't really fight that much. Like I had one flare up with my mom at, at a restaurant dinner, and then I, I, like, steamed and you know stewed and like I didn't. We kind of that that night got lost. Like we didn't. We like went to dinner, and then following that dinner, I went back to the hotel, and I just kind of fumed into a drink at the hotel bar, and had Cody, you know, there as my partner. But like, she wasn't like taking sides or anything. It was just like I needed, I needed space, I needed time. And then the next morning, it was fine. You know, like, who wants to keep fighting? Did, Nobody does. Did Cody enjoy uh, your parents? Like, yeah, she loves them. And, and vice versa. She's, yeah, she thinks they're great. She comes from a family where it's like 
Cody Cody has a childhood memory of or that her this thing that her mom would do regularly when Cody would take a bath. Her mom, Randy Heller, Mama Larusso from the Karate Kid. This is not why she's a valuable mother at all. But it, 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 it arguably gets in the way of it, unconditional it love to have a, a, a professional actor as a mother. It doesn't hurt to know that your mom was in Karate Kid. It doesn't hurt me. I mean, I have become functionally a step karate kid. You don't, you don't make no mistake about it. This is part of the package step for me. Kid. I didn't learn unconditional love. I'm motivated by other things. I love Cody. Part of what I love about Cody is that I get to be a step karate kid. Anyways. <laughs> But no, also, Ra- she was also Rizzo on Broadway in uh, in Greece, wasn't she? Yeah, she was also. You know, I, I didn't. I her, her. She was. Most people recognize her on the street when that happens as uh, her character that she played in Mad Men. She was uh, Don Draper's um, secretary for a season. Shit. <sighs> We're, this show isn't about fucking Randy Heller, all right? It could be. She's got enough attention. Um, but, but what she, she was also a loving mother and what she would do, she, like Cody has this, like, it's not even a story. It's not an anecdote. It's a tradition that her mom had with Cody. Cody would take a bath. And then after the bath was done, Cody would get out of the bath. Her mom would, would wrap her up in a big, uh, t- a towel and then wrap her up in a big blanket, like a comforter. And then her, and her mom would, would, would start dragging her around the house <laughs> in, inside the comforter, uh, uh, saying, uh, I got a wild fish here. I got a wild fish. And uh, she would do this elaborate, like, radio play for baby Cody, who was, like, just cocooned in this comforter, being dragged around hardwood floors around an apartment, and while her mom pretended that she was passing various checkpoints and lying about whether she had a, a wild fish <laughs> with her. So she would do different voices uh, no, sir, I don't have any uh, wildlife or agriculture in, in my comforter. I just, uh, just, just, just a bag and like trying to keep her quiet, keep her from giggling. I, look, this isn't about let's bag on the Harmons. This is about contrast. Uh, my memories are the water would get cold after a while and I would find my way out and <laughs> go roll in pine needles. All right. Uh, <laughs> there are important... I, I, like, till what age did uh, did I stop bathing? No, that, the, 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 I don't know. How, when was my first bath? Till what age did uh, Cody's mom do the wild fish thing? Like, like fifteen, <laughs> twenty-seven. Yeah, um, we did it together. She handed it was like a passing of the baton. I don't know. I don't know that answer. But you and your mom and your dad didn't have any kind of heritage like that. Like you didn't have special little fun games. Mm. I can't. No, I, Rob Schraub just yelled out Tiki, which was a nickname that I had. Tiki? Yeah. I don't what, know. Wh- why Tiki? It, it was a favorite childhood story of mine, Tiki Tiki Timbo. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> God damn it. We heard about that on Whiting Wong's, the Thanksgiving special. Oh, yeah. Which you can check out on iTunes. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like uh, we should bring Rob Schraub up on stage right now. Well, we also have an important guest. It's been a long time coming because remember, w- w- since the election, my goal has been to, because I don't know what I'm doing, and I have a forum, and I I immediately had reactions that were both predictable, unhelpful, and ultimately unguiding. I uh, got mad at everybody and uh, bought a gun and <laughs> have, have since basically been trying to focus on quitting all my jobs and building a uh, bat cave with a crossbow aimed at the door. But uh, I, 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 in the meantime, I've wanted to use my platform if I could to like signal boost the, the whole spectrum. You know, the only thing step I've taken was we had, we flew Gotham Girl uh, out from, from New York and she, I think, I don't know if she would want to be called, I don't know what label she'd want to be called. She calls herself an Eleanor Democrat in her bio. She talked about, you know, as a, you know, it, it it's important. It was important to hear from an intelligent person's perspective. Like, basically, don't give up on on what we would call the old Democratic Party. You know, let's hack it the way that the 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 Nazis have hacked the uh, right wing, the, the the Republican Party. I mean, they they infiltrated it, took it over, and now the word Republican means I want to win. 
Um, it didn't mean much before that, but it's like, and I think the idea is like, come on, we can make the democ, we can still use this shell of a democratic party, hack it, drive it from the inside because it has the numbers and the system systemic advantage that it can. It's the only thing that can rock and sock them that robot. So now let's hear. Maybe I, I would assume maybe another perspective, but I want to. I want to definitely be clear that this. We, we we wanted to have somebody from the DSA on the Democratic Socialists of America, and um, but we, we th th this is a guy who's a member of them. He's not a. He doesn't represent them as a leader or anything. He's not a spokesman. He's already. We'll talk about how he's already. He resigned from his position as an official spokesman because of a little, like a little. Um, uh, gridlock, little cultural gridlock, <laughs> comedic cultural gridlock that happened where he did the smart thing and like backed out as being a representative. So, but but what he is is a, is a guy who understands that perspective, which I think is different from the other one that we've gotten. And we tried we tried to get an official spokesperson, officially sanctioned by a local chapter of the DSA, and we tried for multiple months. I want to say four or five in total. And uh, then we took matters into our own hands and just were like, hey, this guy, I think he knows something. Let's like get the, him. Like, like the socialist activists that we are. We took matters in our own hands. But I, 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 I don't know whose fault that is. That could it's be their fault. And if they want to be taken seriously as a political group, they should get on their shit. <laughs> Do we know for sure that Levy is a I'm going to take that stand. I, well, uh, uh, well I'll, take, I'll take that stand and I'll take the stand that Steve has been cock blocking them from day one as the alt right uh, subversive <laughs> insurgent. <laughs> that he is <laughs> okay good well let's huh. let's bring up our new friend josh androsky oh yeah he's got Hello. two cans hi hello josh well, how are you how are you good to see you, good to see you. Well, you now you, i feel you, bad i didn't shake spencer you, you got no, some you, okay. you got some lacrosse there you came up double fisting some lacrosse. I quit drinking, and I know this podcast well oh, enough no. to know that there would be no uh, non-alcoholic beverages. Right, so, just like Dino's party. Uh, it's uh, taking matters into your own hands. Spencer did the, I don't know if he did it out of fashion or uh, climate control, but y y you walked in and you were wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Socialists uh, prove that white people do have culture. You know? <laughs> I thought you were just going to say, socialists dress like Spencer. Yeah, no, we do. We all... That's, like, the, under, that's the subtext. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so let, uh, you know, I, 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 people can Google and they can Wikipedia and stuff. I wikipedia and Googled for the 11-minute drive from Las Feliz to Burbank. Um Here's what you can learn by reading and scrolling. Uh, the DSA was once a part of the IS, the International Socialist or Socialist International SI, Sports Illustrated. If they were, we're playing part of Sports Illustrated, Socialist Illustrated. Uh, our swimsuit issue was like <laughs> really revolutionary. We had one swimsuit for all the models. Yes. It, it, it was Betty for Dan wearing a burqa. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, They're all wearing gas masks. It was Frida Kahlo designed it. It was incredible. <laughs> um, but there was a split in 82. The D what we now call the DSA like voted to extricate themselves from the larger global so socialists. Basically, none of that shit matters at all. Uh, the history and, and what, what I mean to say is I don't know. Because oh, okay. <laughs> the, the DSA <laughs> fundamentally transformed during the last election. Right. It's right. now what it is. It's, but it's important to note, for instance, that it's not a political party, right? No. You don't have a candidate. Right. So we're not a political party in the sense that we're not going to fall. Uh, and hopefully, this is, this is what people have worked towards. And, and my friends and myself have worked towards. We don't want to fall into the trapping of the Green Party where you just uh, every four years trot out somebody that is uh, like whatever, just a person, uh, good or bad. And then it's like every four years you're like, hey, let's change everything from the president down because nobody knows who the fuck we are. Exactly. And well, so, also, it just falls apart. Like, I, right. you just can't. Uh, 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 if we have a problem with the way the system has been run, part of the problem is that there's just some knucklehead who supposedly is supposed to not offend everybody right. every minute of every day. And, and supposedly that there's, you know, that the president, I think Donald Trump has proven more than anything that the president doesn't really do that much. Right. Uh, that the president is more of a figurehead right now, um, and and he has certainly can't. What we do know about that office is that you can't 
blow up the world from it within less than a year. Right, which like makes it relatively less powerful than, let's say, the head of Al Qaeda. Yeah, or or the, a general, right. <laughs> you know, like uh, an unelected person in our government. Um, <laughs> and so, what what we have done as far as like the idea of like, are we a political party or not? Uh, in local elections, that's where we're focusing. We truly think you you were talking about. Um, how it's like the big robot fight, like the Pacific Rim between the Democrats and the Republicans or whatever. We're the little land speeders tying their legs together, <laughs> right, you right. know? Like, uh, if... No. <laughs> yes. This is Rob Schraub. Snow speeder. We're the little snow speeders. Fuck. I oh, ruined point, it. Rob. Nobody likes a DSA anymore because yeah. I fucked up a Star Wars <laughs> reference. This is bad. Uh so no, no, I don't think that's what. I, oh, you said. Oh, he said speeder. land speeders, and you're correcting him. Wow, he's I'm, right. I'm catching up. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Shrab, by the way, is that little black box that Chewbacca scared on the Death Star. <laughs> Only there's no Chewbacca's what, here. What, what was, they make the what, whole Death Star out of the what black box. What was the name of that <laughs> droid? What was the name of that little uh, droid? Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're asking because you know. I don't know. Right? Oh. Oh wow! It's uh, four, <laughs> four twenty sixty nine. Four twenty sixty nine. Fucking never forget. Um, never forget all right, 69. but uh, but um, yeah. So it's it's but that's important to know because right away to me it's like because it, it, I mean there you backed. I'm, I'm saying you like you're this whole group, but the you 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 pick a candidate in these big fights. Sure. Uh, well, uh, traditionally, no. But in this last election, yes, with Bernie, because Bernie was the uh, only candidate uh, that was left of uh, sort of the centrist opinion who actually had a shot. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't with them during that period, but I know that they were like, hey, let's back Bernie. Um, but for me, and like the, the way that I got into the DSA is... Uh, I wanted, I, I was sick and tired. I was always the guy when like the bad shit would happen uh, that I would be the first guy out to protest. I would be the first person out to do a benefit show about the bad thing. And I was sick and tired of reacting to all the bad shit. And I was like, well, how do you stop the bad shit from happening? And I thought, I'm one guy. I'm not a billionaire. And, you know, I'm not like Timothy Comcast with access to all the resources in the world. That little and prick. Yeah, fucking Timothy Carver. Has doesn't... not earned his position as CEO no. of Comcast at all. Obviously clearly nepotism. nepotism. Uh, clearly. I mean, yeah, there's, there's no the, way the, that's a coincidence. Yeah. No, no. I, I know he says he spells it with a K, but we all know he's fucking yeah. joking. He looks just like his dad. <laughs> but, he's got the antenna and the blinking right? light on his forehead. Yeah. Uh, so I, I saw that the DSA was doing stuff locally, and the idea that we all fight in all these similar battles. You know, everybody's fighting for better housing, for better medicine to treat um, oppressed groups like human beings. Like we all have these fights locally within our own communities. And so if every city bands together and makes, you know, topples their local Trump, then that will lead to a domino effect because there's Trumps everywhere. And oftentimes they're way funnier and crazier than the actual Trump because they don't think anyone's looking at them. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about. It's like probably local wrestling franchises are like way more crazy than right. WCW or whatever. Yeah, like the ECW where it's they like, were just. That, is that guy really staring into the sun, man? Yeah, is that guy a uh, <laughs> dancing queen? The, He's the ABBA-themed wrestler? The outlet forker. This seems irresponsible, <laughs> but that's District 12. Watch out for running with scissors, man. He's in <laughs> hey, kids, when you're out there, grab those scissors. Left-handed, right-handed, run with them. you got to run free. Don't let me, people make you walk with scissors. you got to stare in the sun. you got to put those scissors in an outlet. hoo and his catchphrase is hua. That's actually his entire catchphrase. <laughs> he says that every time. Well, he's, 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 he's army. He's, yeah. He's, yeah, well, or he's scent of a woman de derivative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is Pacino. That's Pacino's latest role is running with scissors, man. He has just become <laughs> a caricature of himself. Uh, oh, God. Oh, hoo, hoo ah, diggity dog. Hey, who am I? I don't know. I just wanted diggity to... dog? Yeah, I don't know. What, did he say that in Dog Day Afternoon? Yeah, probably. <laughs> diggity dog. I want my I want my ransom. I want my my trans lover. I want my. I want to talk to a negotiator. Diggity dog. That's dog a... day. We got a dog day here. <laughs> Hot cha cha cha. Dog bullet. <laughs> I told you about the time I, I peed next to him at the restaurant, and he was and he had headphones, and he was like, I think, learning lions. 
I'm peeing next to the chain. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, As it's coming out, is that the reaction to the, was it a good I, piece? I, I, I think he was learning lines. He had, he had, he had little earbuds in, and he... <laughs> This I, made I, me I, I no. This is part of what the explanation for what Pacino became as an as an icon. Like it's that he started running lines at the urinal, so yep. he's suffering yeah. from piss shiver while he's like committing <laughs> these lines. Like he, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that, Dan. Tonight's show has been brought to you by Piss Shiver. Piss Shiver. Is your body filled with the warmth of a have, of having uh, war, r- r- uh, body temperature urine in its bladder? Uh, as it rapidly exits, uh, don't just shiver. Piss Shiver. When you're at the urinal and can't explain why you're suddenly shuddering. Hey, look down here. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> your dick. <laughs> I sure have been shivering a lot while, I'm, while I've been pissing. You know, I ain't just an enlarged uh, form of clitoris that was mutated when your species <laughs> decided to become sexually reproductive instead of asexual. Uh, that was just a thank you, ladies. Can You're we? Is, is there a way to reverse angle on Rob Schraub with his feet on the stage? He's so clearly... You look like you're about to rap battle at an office. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, why, why don't we bring him up now that we're comfortable and you're not... You, 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 Do we you, have you, enough you, mics? It doesn't look oh, like we, there's... Oh, we it. got mics. Oh, I didn't see that one. Sorry, yeah. everybody. Let's Rob pray. Schraub to the stage. He's if a, we can't control you, you side. can't control us. Lethargically <laughs> 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 lift now himself he's from he doesn't the want seat. to be up here. Now he it's going to be... He sits and pulls his legs up deal. on the stage. Yeah! Sauntering to the chair, he gestures lazily at the microphone and cup. Hello. He I'm stands. Hi, Hello. Rob. How's Hi. it going? Hello. How, how are you? I'm okay. What What are you been up to, Rob? How How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. I went to Topanga and spent it with uh, uh, Kate's parents. Yeah. And do, family. Do they enjoy you? Do they, do I think do so. Do they like their Rob Schramms? I think so. I was cutting it up during dinner. Do, do, do you remember any bone maws that you fucking th- threw out? Bone maws. Top three bone, bone maws. Bone maw. Bone, 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 bone Number one. Bone maws. Number three. Bone maw. I don't know what that word is. Like, like, bone uh, maw. Bone maw. Bone maw. Any, any I zinger. I still don't top know. It doesn't matter how you pronou- pronounce it. Any fun it. little, like, you know, little sugar-coated no, fucking zingers. I don't, zingers I don't really remember. It was just a lot of just me being an idiot. Hmm. I don't. I don't really have any. What's your problem. secret, Rob? What, 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 when you go into I a room, I just say things. Uh, a, That's my. When you're in a room full of strangers, what, if you could give people out there any advice, what would be your advice to somebody going into a room full of strangers mm. and h- how to win them over? Oh God, I don't know. In like a I'd social like or a professional setting. Yeah. Uh, either. Uh, uh, l- let's just say at a, at a social setting, like 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 Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't know how I would... I don't think I've ever won anybody over. Well, why uh, don't you, well take some time with that question, and then the format of the show will, be, will, will, will swivel back over to, uh, to talking about DSA, and then we'll, 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 when we come back to Schraub, we're going to learn his secret for when he enters I, a room. I, I we're going to find out your secret. secret. We're just, gonna find just, out just think about know. it for a second. Monetize it, dude. Just think about it. For monetize He doesn't what? have to monetize it. He just has I to... I don't to, know what you... Just like. think about it for five minutes. I'm going to talk to Josh Andrasky from the DSA. And then Hello. you think about your secret, Rob. Your secret. It's not, I'm not How do making you keep a mistake that anybody so wants soft to listen and to me be a fake uh, interviewer for uh, or know about... I'm saying, like, let's blend this. This is good. It's like a parfait. So just... Think about the answer to that question. What are your, what's your secret? Josh, we can't really talk about uh, the Democratic uh, uh, Party or, or the remnants thereof without talking about this new word that I learned, neoliberalism. Ah, yes. Neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is basically uh, socially liberal, uh, but not, uh, but like fiscally conservative. And as somebody- Corporately f- friendly. Generally corporate. Right. And I forget who, who tweeted this. It's one of my favorite tweets. It was, um, I'm socially liberal, but fiscally conservative. I hate the problems, but I love their causes. <laughs> and, and that's really what it is. It's, <laughs> it's like, and, and somebody else tweeted, like the, the platonic ideal of neoliberalism is to have racial and gender balance on the board of a drone company. Right. You know, it's like this hollow identity politics, something like, 
um, uh, Los Angeles' district attorney is a woman of color, right? And you think that's a victory to have a black woman in such like a big you know, a position of power, and it is. However, she has not uh, persecuted any murderous policeman in mm -hmm. her entire tenure. And so something like that would be like an example of that's probably neoliberalism in action. It's somebody who doesn't want to upset the status quo, who doesn't want, who still wants the, the ultra wealthy to be as rich as possible and the yep. rest of us to be fighting for crumbs. But it's a thing that was working yesterday, which I have yes. found in my exploration of white fragility. I went and bought a gun. That's a classic neoliberal move, I would say. I mean, it's just a classic white dude move. That's a classic <laughs> scared white guy move is to buy it. It's the scared white guy and move. And my therapist would say, who's the gun for? And I, and I, I could, but she's my therapist. So she's, I didn't realize until 10 minutes into the conversation, she's asking, is it for you? Yep. Yeah. Because uh, Hunter S. Thompson bought one at one point, um, didn't buy it for himself. Like, And I'm like, thank you and for that he's equation. he's famous. Um, <laughs> More important, for blowing his brains out and letting his daughter find him. Um, Great suicide note, though. Yeah, football season's over. Yeah, there. Uh, <laughs> but it was it because it's it was yeah it's it's it, the appeal the billboard for right. neoliberalism now. I think I've been a spokesman for it in my behavior mm -hmm. and my if I if I just put my thumb in my mouth and just say what I'm really feeling without. Uh, you know, Kool-Aid uh, plunging into some cause that's going to like not benefit me ultimately or in any immediate way that I can feel. Right. If I just follow my comfort, I am a neoliberal. I want my Obama back. I want my Obama back. Right. Yeah. And, and that is something that people need to... Uh, <laughs> I, I want you... To, to have committed more to your well, there's an extra back, syllable back. in there. I want my bomba back, bomba back, bomba back, bomba back. Drones. There's gotta be somebody has done that. Come on, technocratic, bureaucratic, bomba back. Oh, it's like the West you know Wing what? was it's real. It's not a thing because then there's ribs, and then that's an unfortunate cultural connotation that yeah. we don't want to step into. <laughs> but you did a really good job of avoiding it until you mentioned that you avoided it. <laughs> right, I know. Well, that's me. That's classic Harmon. Uh, hey, everybody, look, I'm not racist because I wasn't thinking about this. <laughs> um, Schraub, all right, what's your secret? No excuse. I, uh, you know, I how mean, are you cutting it up? How am I cutting it up? I don't know. I was just being an idiot. I mean, like, there was two children there, and they're nice. at that age that they just are laughing at any how old attention. Uh, I, probably, I think like. <sighs> Uh, like four and six. Those well, are good. Those are good social ages. Yeah. Like I like I like the fours and the sixes. Yeah, like, uh, I get. Yeah, I'm, you know, just goofing off. Like because they're, cause they're verbal silly. and they're but they're and they're inquisitive and they're like they're uh, yeah. If you talk to them like a grown up, they can. They're they're pretty fun. Yeah. Do you, do you, you you're not are you not to pry? Like this could go into personal stuff with you and Kate, who I married. Um, you married Kate? I officiated your marriage to her. <laughs> um, you guys had no plans to have children, which is why you didn't bother getting married. I was married. the MC at that wedding. Mm -hmm. do you get, do you, are you, is there any change there? Is there any capacity for change? Do the two of you ever talk about it? You've ever no. Read it? No. You've just, you just not. resolved no kids. Like You're both totally... I think it's, got, it, it, it's, it's come up. Kate just is not interested, and I'm like fine with that. I don't really... There's I, other people's kids. Yeah, I mean, there's other people's kids. I, you know, my biggest thing about children is parents. Yeah. I don't, I, I, you know, what happens to, do you have kids? Am I insulting no. you? Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I do not have kids. Okay, so it's, it's just, I see what happens to people when they become parents and it's it's something that's you know great for them but even the coolest parents in the world and i think i have seen them like I've, i really the cool parents are the worst well they're not the worst but i uh, but, well because no I'm, they're the worst well there's there's things that, that it heightens it, 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 the the actual cool parents who are people who I'm like, wow, well, that's as good as you're going to get as far as parenting. Yeah. I still recognize that parenting has subsumed their identity. and But that's it. I mean, like, it's the thing, the thing, like, first of all, 
I'll put my dog up against any baby any day. Any day. <laughs> well, that's a biological way. killing machine. This. I that's, not, see this. that's not a fair fight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, your, your dog could kill my No, 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 no. <laughs> not, not a fight. Well, you, right, well, not a fight. Clarify. I'll put my dog up fight? against a baby. Uh, just like... What are you going to do? Also, like peop- dog pe- people don't know that, that more adorable than you. That baby. Rob Schraub runs a baby dog fight ring out of his fucking apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it's or not a warehouse. At all, what I was saying. So but where sure. are these fights? If we wanted to like buy tickets, <laughs> like I just said <laughs> when you interrupted me, that's not oh. what I meant. How do that's you well, get so baby blood out of a carpet? I didn't mean that. Well. <laughs> Club, I club, meant club comparing my dog to a baby. Yes. Okay. So finish that thought. You, like a dog. A dog is, is my you, dog. You can experience <laughs> not a dog. <laughs> my dog. You can experience the, your, your loving. dog. The the notorious baby killer. Like I just said, <laughs> that's not what I meant. All right. Well. All right. Swiveling back over. Josh, <laughs> we can't. Really and ta- that's how I charm. A new group <laughs> of people. Woo. I want to talk about the tr- the classic <sighs> thing, but for kids, maybe it's not classic. Like Marxism versus communism versus socialism. Uh, Marx versus like for like I just found out about this guy Michael Harrington, who's like that was he's dead, right? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I guess. But he was an author, activist, whatever. He's sort of the the, the maybe the. Could we say the Chomsky of the DSA or something? I don't know. Again, like he's a guy who I personally haven't really. And this is like the thing that I love about the DSA is I dropped out of high school. I have never read Marx. I okay. think that socialism is as a concept. It's it's mostly the liberation of your own body from like a corporate overlord. It's basically the idea of putting the the capital putting the the means of production, which is specifically what Marx talked about. I've read quotes uh, specifically, <laughs> like I saw, I saw, you, you got the, the the Snapple, the limited edition yes. s- Marx Snapple. Yeah, which uh, is weird that his estate agreed to any sort of commodification. But yeah, Snapple, believe it or not, no less. It, it, yeah. I think it had a lot to do with old world blue blood relationships. Tea, the, the, Snapple, the Snapple <laughs> fortune was, you know, the the, the Marx chewing gum company that which is right. something they've buried in the history books yeah they don't talk about that um they, they're both procter and gamble yeah so i but anyways the the but 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 Mar- marx is a like i'm, I'm with you i have no research I'm, I'm 11 minutes of 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 wikipedia right the reason i bring this stuff up is because for instance your average 16 year old kid right now who for better or for worse is is waiting in the same swimming pool that we all are um, I'm getting in fights on the reg, fam, um, with people who they can uh, they, they, they they could be children, right? Um, they could be t- forty years older than me. They could be any of those things and be totally. But we're all we're all splashing around in the same pool, and that's a distinct advantage to people who are driven by competition and individualism and and I'll say it hatred, like because you can say, for instance. Um, if I were to say I'm having the DSA on my show tomorrow night, someone might say, for instance, I don't know. Oh, yeah, great. You guys think Nazis are responsible for all these deaths that you faked, but com- communism has re- has been responsible for uh, over 80 billion uh, deaths in the last uh, 120 years. Blah blah blah. Because they right. want to label and they want to. And this is this is the thing that that I would say. Like, if if there's anything that I've learned, it's Get off the fucking internet. <laughs> Stop your, like, book clubs are fine. Like, you can read Marx and talk about whatever. But I learned everything I know about politics, about socialism, about, uh, you know, the thing that radicalized me was going and meeting people, hearing people, hearing people that work for teachers unions, hearing, you know, some, like, intellectuals that are, like, you know, work as professors or whatever, um, just rank-and-file union folks uh, and and nurses and this and that and, and talking to all these people and watching the action and participating in an action. That's what... That's what teaches me, and and to me specifically, 
Um, I think that we as socialists, we as leftists, need to remove ourselves from the world of academia because I think that that was purposefully done. That was sort of a move like, oh, let's get them all in their little bubbles, their little coastal bubbles where they just sit and they wear glasses and they look like their bones are going to break if they wear a sweater <laughs> and they fucking talk and talk and talk and they just want to jerk off over which dead Russian dude like they liked the most. Right. And and. Play, playing philosophical chess on a daytime talk it's show. It's sports. It's the same fucking thing. It's it's who's your team, who's this. And, and a lot of politics, not just like leftist politics, a lot of like national politics is just sports as well. Uh, but when you actually get offline and, and, and get out of the you know university and and go onto the streets and start talking about people and trying to help them, like, you know, DSA right now, for example. Uh, like, doing an action like this will teach you more, I think, personally about socialism than reading anything. They're putting on a taillight benefit. DSA Los Angeles is doing this inspired by DSA New Orleans. So the thought was, um, people of color, migrant workers, uh, you know, just undocumented folks, uh, they are getting pulled over and they are being thrown into the carceral state. They're being thrown into, uh, you know, if you're undocumented, you're being thrown into a private prison um, where they hold immigrants. It's not like they go to a Radisson, they go to a private prison. Um, or if you're just a fucking black dude, you're gonna get fucked with by the cops because the police is inherently a racist system. And so uh, what we're doing is we are for free providing brake lights. If your brake light's out, that's most likely what's going to get you pulled over. Right, uh -huh. and then they can search your car and stuff because exactly. you look not white. Right, exactly. And, and, and it could, and likely often does, end up with some unarmed person being shot. Uh, and so if we, if that is a concept that's like borrowed from the Black Panthers, known as like mutual aid, we help them, but they also help us because we have now ingrained ourselves in the community more. And so we can like get more people to go do more cool shit. Right, like that. right. And, and it's like, oh, who's this fucking dude that just gave me a free brake light? Right. No, like, we promise we're not asking you for anything. Right. <laughs> like, we um, don't want your Facebook login. We don't want any of if that. If you shit. do that a hundred times, then it's, it's a, you tur tur turning your money into into shit that actually translates right. with the most fidelity into changing an individual life. Absolutely. And how, it's not. How charity. do you do that? How do you just? Distribute the. I mean, that's so, awesome. Right. So for what we have, uh, if you go to dsa-la.org uh, and you look and you click on the taillight benefit page, um, there is a uh, like a Kickstarter type thing. It's it's within our uh, our chapters, uh, like a fundraising thing. And so uh, so far we've raised over a thousand dollars. And then what happens is we just ask around to friends who know mechanics. We've reached out to high schools that have shop classes. We're, we're, we're looking for a, a venue now, a large parking lot. Um, the school would be rad because ice can't come on school property. Um, and, and so what we do is we then talk to our friends and say, hey, who knows how to, how to change a brake light? Then they run a training for the interested volunteers. So now our volunteers know how to fix their own cars and then they go help fix other people's cars and then, you know, just talk nice. to them. Nice, yeah. Like, yeah. I got, like that's appealing to a guy like me because I'm like, oh shit, now I feel a little more macho because I, I know I'm, how to de do this I'm thing. dealing in brake lights now. Right. Um, yeah, you use your hands to help your community. Speaking of which, um, like, like not to put you on the spot, but sure. um, a guy like me. So, like, classically... Fragile neoliberal, like like it, maybe philosophically progressive, no research, total comfort zone, five bedroom house, um, uh, just want everything to go back to the way it was. Shuddering at night, uh, fearing not being able to protect my girlfriend from any form of e economic destabilization and any manifestation thereof. Just want my comfort back. I felt like I was playing the game right. Blah blah blah. I'll, I'll, you can read it and all in my my pamphlet. <laughs> um, you you get the picture with me. Um, Guy, like whether it's the famous version of me, but also I'm selfishly asking, like, what are more like, like you, 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 you're directing me to the website in, the, in this mm -hmm. case, but like, what are, what are, what are like, what are like little pieces of candy you, you can hand out once right. I get it on my tongue at no risk to my, my own comfort, right? you know, that when I taste it, it'll, it'll start happening for so me. 
This is a, a thing that we talk about a lot that, that our healthcare committee uh, and, and a lot of people working nationally in the healthcare committee talk about uh, is uh, the difference between selfishness, selflessness, and self interest. These are three different things. Selfishness is, hey, I got all this money, I don't want it to go to anybody, no taxes, whatever, and, and you know, pure greed, right? Um, or on, on, you know, conversely, it's I broke my leg, I need Medicare for all because my leg is broken, right? right? Selflessness is I am a perfectly healthy person. I don't need anything. I'll never be sick because take I'm my in bone shape. marrow. I've got extra yeah. marrow. Right, and you're doing this for somebody else and and, and not for you at all. Right. But selfless or self interest. I is, like this. I like this already. Self interest is how can I help everybody else out while also helping myself out because we're all in this together. And so that kind of that's the the tone that we're aiming for when we talk to people. You guys like that third one, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Cuz that really sounds good. I, 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 I like, you I like, and I like your, your your little dance that you did. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it's like it's like you can there is room in the world for people under an actual f- form of democratic socialism. Right. That like 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 tell me yes or no. I think the big root fear for for uh, I would say especially but definitely including poor people is Hey, wait! I don't want the rules to monopoly to be that you can't have more money than someone else. Right, and see, this is a thing that that is, um, you know, a, a very successful propaganda campaign that it's um, conflating communism and socialism essentially, right? Yes, and and democratic socialism specifically is not like a state, like it's not like this big state power or whatever. Roads That's like, and you Medicare can't... are socialist. Then yes. they exist in a, social security is socialist social and it exists security? today. Absolutely. It's social not communism. Security. Probably the most famous form of socialism is social security. And what it is, is it's not only um, a thing that benefits people from people that already have too much, where it's like, this is fair. We all agree that, you know, everybody knows that the people at the top aren't paying enough. And, and so we all can agree that like, okay, they just get paid a little bit or they pay a little bit fucking more into taxes. And then literally we all have health care. All have access to a doctor. It's that easy. And um, what what we want more is like a co-op where you're a worker, you own your company, you're a shareholder. There's not a room full of faceless number men in you know gray smoky suits with fucking you know just like guns to a dog's head, and the, all the profits go and to them. Stockholders. Yeah, the shareholders. Right, with their and, interests. And so, like, a, a good example of this is another thing that we're doing with the DSA right now, which is we are trying to help Los Angeles create a public bank. Not for you and me to go to the ATM, but when you think about it, Los Angeles has something like $8 billion in 700 bank accounts, all at Wells Fargo. At the one, at that one bank, and that eight billion dollars is everything from your electric bill payments to uh, your taxes to fees to four hundred one k plans for city clerks. When that money is in Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo then through loans and dividends and investments and whatnot, they spread that money to Philip Morris. Right. They spread that money to weapons companies and 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 the so Keystone Pipeline. Exactly. Yes. That's right. What's one the, of the phrase for this again? I saw Sarah Silverman talking about it. You t- you know, like- uh, divest, divestment, and and so. A lot of people, Sarah Silverman uh, being one of them, and myself included, have divested our personal money from big Wall Street banks and put them into credit unions. But now what we're asking is for cities, for, for municipalities, because you and me, and, and we do like this, it's a drop in the bucket, but $8 billion that is not going to get invested in horrible fossil fuels or private prisons is a big chunk of change to get you, out of Wall You were Street's talking hands. about that, this idea yeah, that local politics started to to get subsumed by I'll the talk, banking industry. I'll be talking out of my ass. There's this YouTube documentary you can watch called Hypernormalization, which is very scary. It's great. One of the things it talked about is there was this huge change where the bankers who were de facto funding everything on the government's behalf because banks have stand to gain from being in the business of government, they're like, yeah, let's go along. We'll give you the loan. You can make this building. We'll make City Hall. We're working together as a team they went from that to saying wait a second we have all the money fuck you guys do everything we say because we're a private corporation that now holds the purse strings for the government and when that fundamental power shift changed kind of everything got ruined and fucked so it sounds like this is kind of a reversal it's d de- it's defanging the power that finance has our private finance has over the government which shouldn't be in the business of private finance it should be in the business of aiding people 
Right, exactly. And and so these, you know, when 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 your electric bill is sitting at Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo's making, you know, if if you pay your electric bill with a credit card, Wells Fargo gets a fee. And that's just coming right off the top from the Not city going money. Not to the government. Into it, it, yeah, it doesn't go to the government. It doesn't go to make your roads better or your schools better. It goes into some fucking cokehead's pocket, you know? And so what we want is to create a municipal bank where then all of this money is housed in an institution that's central motive isn't profit. Its central motive is, hey, we are, uh, this is city public money. It's your money. It's my money. It's all of our money. It should be stay in Los Angeles, and beyond that, we should open it up so that people historically that have had a hard time getting loans can get loans. We can use this money, like, you know, if it's run well, which banks happen to be run well when it comes to collecting a profit at the end of the year, instead of that profit going to bankers, that profit can go into housing or schools and the like. The theory behind the American dream is that money is the great, equalizer that that it, it, it is like somehow a supreme kind of meta form of democracy that doesn't have to happen every four years pulling a lever that you can work hard and work so hard that love your children so much love your family so much that you can ch chisel away at so much fucking coal in a mine that 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 you're while your your coal mining colleague is like eh you know I love mining coal, but I'm going to go home and, and uh, fucking chill. I can't wait to get off of work, and I figured out a way to mine coal. But that if you, for whatever reason, Pull yourself up by your that you're straps. like, God damn it, I'm fucking going to mine so much fucking coal, and that, that, that somehow that represents some kind of egress, that you can become a capitalist, that you can become, that you can, you can that, that, and that, that every... There are people listening to that that disagree with me politically, but absolutely everyone agrees that that's what's for sale it is the yes. whenever anyone detracts whenever someone like cries out for rights or fair treatment and people start coming down to them and saying like why don't you get a fucking job why don't you just work hard what do you mean isn't this a slippery slope all this stuff every st all of those sentiments lead back to the rome of yeah but shouldn't we just live in a society where if you work extra hard harder than the person next to you that that represents a a, a, a a changed opportunity to play the Monopoly game. Right, and fundamentally, it's a flawed premise because that doesn't take into account historical context of people of color being subjugated and generationally not being put in a position where they can get this job. So that leads white people who don't know that they have you know, started the race at the finish line going like, hey, look at these people lagging in the back. Maybe if they ran faster. Like, and, and the thing is, it's not your fault if you're a white dude that that racism exists and that's like a big problem with a lot of people on the left that are correctly angry but aren't trying to bring people in that, like and, and go you know I don't hate every Trump voter I think that talking about Trump voters as this uh, this like huge amorphous blob of hate is wrong it's wrong-headed it's bad 20% uh, I'll give 20% of Trump voters irreparable racists, horrible people. But I really, truly believe that 80% of Trump voters have a kid that's addicted to opiates or lost their house or lost their job, and like you said, they kept fucking working hard and nothing happened, and so they wanted to make a change. They just wanted to give a big fuck you to the system that ruined their lives. And the Democrats seeing this, and this is why I don't think you can work within the Democratic Party, because ultimately they're beholden to their donors. But they see this, and who do they trot out to fight this? The avatar of the status quo. And you see it happen over and over and over again. And the only time that it works is if you have literally the most charismatic man who's ever been like uh, nominated for president to sell that bill of goods to people. Yeah, and if that ever happened, boy... It, you'd know it because there would be this actual measurable shift in everything from economy to society um, yeah. to the point. And, and I'm not I'm not kissing his feet, but it's like that's we cannot wait for another guy that happens to be that lightning in a jar. Like, like, like as long as it's I don't know, because I, I think Obama as a man is a great man. I think uh, he as a president, I disagreed with a lot of his decisions, um, obviously compared to the other guys, you know, that sandwiched him. He was this golden, you know, statue of pure greatness. But when you I think the Democrats 
fundamentally don't understand how power works. Because if they did, they wouldn't have lost thousands of state legislature seats under Obama. How, when you have such a popular president, can you just get fucking creamed in every local election? And it's because the Democrats are just so top heavy. They're this big bobblehead that is just doomed to fall forward and not move. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And yeah. so that's why we at the DSA, we're not targeting even senators or, you know, we, we want state this legislatures. It's a thing and that local we all people. have in common with these, these let's say, these 20% of Trump voters who actually voted out of frustration. You can you, you the, we're we're cousins. All of us. If you in your backyard um, have a, there's a pothole that hasn't been filled. Right. The, if 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 the, if by virtue of some bureaucratic absurdity, your kids. Uh, uh, leukemia isn't covered right. um it, 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 everybody and bureaucratic absurdity in that case by the way is greed <laughs> like it's it's definitely greed it, 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 every, it, and, and it's just that because it's just by virtue of belt buckles and baseball caps and the way that we express when we aren't armed with noam chomsky's vocabulary um our frustration with a system some guy that to, right next to me in terms of tax bracket and ideology is going to maybe say key phrases that I have been armed to um, recognize as the enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, when these guys start talking about freedom of speech, they mean they mean they want to be Nazis. When these right. guys start talking about where's my gold pocket watch, what they mean is that they want to, they, they, this institutionalized thing. And then they're hearing the same thing. I mean, when these people talk about uh, Black Lives Matter, they mean blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I mean, we've all said it a thousand times, and it's right under our nose. Like the it, it, the, the divisions there are so artificially imposed; they have to be forced. Otherwise, if you j j like like you know these movies where like society collapses, and then like within thirty years, there's just ivy and wolves everywhere. Right. Like like there is constant infrastructural pressure necessary to maintain a division between a black person and a white person in America. Right. And you and have to wake up every morning and make sure those two people know that they're black and white. And they do. And and the power Powers that be do that, and you know it starts. You know, you go back to Howard Zinn, who is somebody I have read a lot, and and really uh, like define my worldview. Um, he talks about how after one of the first big slave rebellions, uh, where white slaves and black slaves teamed up, the powers that were were like, oh fuck, if all of the poor people team up, we're fucked. So they created the middle class. They were like, okay, white slaves in the new world. When you guys, you guys got 20 years, and then you'll get a house, and you'll get a car, and you'll get, you know, not a car, but a horse, which was, they called them cars back then. Um, <laughs> but you'll get a house and a horse and fucking, you know, 40 acres and a mule. And, and um, that was so. There was a horse in every pot. A horse in every pot and a chicken underfoot. Every and one room. day the pot chicken will have foot. wheels, we promise. Yeah. Uh, the wheeled pot and uh, real pot. Uh, yeah. Hemp. Hell yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> what, what that does is that makes it so that, and, and you're right, it is this intense artificial pressure, but it is very specific and it is there uh, purposefully. Um, and it's to keep the people that are two rungs from the bottom of the ladder kicking down. Yep. Just constantly kicking down. And if we all realize that we're all being fucked and don't try to uh, buy into the artificial fucking separation of who we are and allow... Uh, each other to make mistakes and whatnot. That's how the labor movement got us a weekend. You know, it was these people weren't less racist back when labor had more power in America. People were more racist. We get less racist every year, but through great organizing and people that literally died and standing up for their rights, you saw black people, white people, men and women team up to go, we're all getting fucked. Some of us might be getting fucked less, some of us might be getting fucked more, but we're banding together because, again, self-interest. It helps me, it helps everybody else. We need to band together on this. Let's check in with Rob Schraub after this beat. <laughs> Give me a beat. And Rob, I hear you're about to grace us with some tips on how to make your Thanksgiving more vegan friendly. This is how you get them. You give them a, you give them a small dose of politics and then entertainment. Entertainment. Showbiz. Bring the jizz. Stroke your dick, make a pool of semen. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean when I say millennials are gay. <laughs> Today, everybody, 
exploring your love. Not a hawk, but a dove. White feathers with your brothers. Everybody gonna go in the nether in Minecraft. Let's rap about Minecraft. Dig a hole. I know about that. Craft a pickaxe and craft some more. Then you can get more valuable ore. You get a diamond and you make armor from that. And then you fight the dragon and the game ends. But that's not, it doesn't have to. All right, sorry, I got excited about Minecraft. Break. Rap. Break. Church, do the, um, <laughs> can you do the, 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 just the Rihanna kind of, can you sing? Can it just make you sing? Like a, just. He wants you to improvise well, just, a chorus. Like, like I, I, so if, I, if I rap and then you, and then, and then I'll, I'll, okay. I'm rapping. I'm rapping real hard. But that's only one little shard from the mirror of society's reflection. I fucked your mom with my erection. 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 That's a hard dick. Mama. To dinner. Yo, church is on the mic providing my hooks. She's like a chef assisting a cook, but <laughs> not in a hierarchical way. We're, we're equal partners for equal pay because we're socialists we and her work should pay off. <laughs> when your kid goes in and they make him cough and it turns out he one of his testicles has a tumor, it shouldn't just spread like a bad rumor. It should be surgically removed for, for like a minimal cost by, a, by an effectively guided society. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> choo 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 rapper, choo choo rapper like a choo choo train, ripped off Mr. Show just then. Uh, not gonna do it, gonna shuffle to the side. Fuck your mama till her pussy got extra wide. Double decker bus in rapper. Britain. I don't fuck your mama if I'm spitting and I'm chewing on tobacco. I go somewhere else because I have some class. <sighs> uh, 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 milk choo, choo, tastes choo, good. Choo. Fuck your mama like a choo-choo train. Choo-choo-choo-choo. Fuck your mama like a choo-choo train. 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 I'm like a choo-choo train. I fuck your mama like a choo-choo train. All aboard your mama. Go across the country. Fuck your mama so hard she looked like Hubert Humphrey. All aboard your mama. Choo choo. Mama smoke like stack on the top, spewing smoke. Fuck your mama Fuck like your a mama choo so choo hard, But it's not a joke. I did it because I love her. Fuck your mama. Choo the worst. Fucking mama. The worst show. It's, it's great. We're doing it. No, it's, it's really good. Choo choo. What? What, it's, b- it's bad? I fucked your mama like a choo-choo train. <laughs> All right. Well, Ooh. okay. Thank you. That was the exact dance Hillary did on Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. That's here for church. Yeah, thanks, here church. Here for church. Woo! Uh, you wait, wait, church, soda? church, come back up here. Cause, uh, we, we, you In guys were fridge. talking earlier about, about uh, going to um, Thanksgiving. I, I met her parents. Uh, and her father is John Goodman from The Big Lebowski, but like uh, kind of mellow and funny. And he's military. But it, it was cool meeting your family. And he declared no political talk, no Trump talk, no, because he's a Trump voter, right? Yeah. And your mother voted Trump. Just nope. No. He doesn't know that, though. Oh, he, she secretly didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he declared before uh, Thanksgiving dinner that there would be no p- politics talk. Mostly because he knew he'd be outnumbered. Yeah, yes. how, how convenient. Yeah, yeah, because, <laughs> He's like, because no politics. Like, Ten oh, on one, okay. no fight. Your medal, sir, for silencing discourse during this holiday. I give you... But in between dinner and pie... Things started to lean towards politics talk, and I went and played Legos with the... Uh, because he wanted more pie. No, An unfair amount, amount of pie. He wanted a bigger <laughs> oh, piece wanted of pie. He wanted a whole pie. Yeah, yeah Dan. It, it, it was trickle-down Cool Whip. <laughs> 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 he, 
a, lo a, lo a lot of people think that if you, you know, if, if you put out more cool whip, it'll trickle down yeah. onto more pie. It's not true. It's not true. No, it's a I'll eat it all. But Church is a genius because she's like Spock. Like she, you're, you're a logic, like junkie, and you can take your dad out, and you can get you. you she took him out for an hour outside, smoked cigarettes. Or you smoked. He vaped. And they came back in, and he, you had fucking... And I had fixed him. You'd sorted him <laughs> out. <laughs> sorted him out? Temporarily. Temporarily? Wait, explain. Like, how, like, tangible was this fix? Well, most people, when they talk to my father, and I've noticed this online, too, and this happens with my uncle and my cousins, is people react really emotionally, right, to the obviously heinous shit that they're saying, the excuses they're making for things that are inexcusable, and, like... The truth is, is that everything keeps coming back to this but Hillary argument. And the reason is, is that all of those excuses, all of those defending of Roy Moore's and all this crap that's happening right now is really just a defending of the decision they made to vote for someone because they hate Hillary. Right. It's got nothing to do with him as a president or anything that's happening. And especially with my father being the military guy, He's got this notion of the greater good that also comes from a military, like, well, war is ugly and things are terrible and, you know, you got to get through it and, you know, that some things are going to be bad, but in the long run, it's all going to be better. And that's how he judges Roy Moore's right now mm -hmm. because it's for the greater good in his eyes because we had to do this because Hillary. We were avoiding this horrible thing. And I think that that's a lot of people and their perspective. And they saw everybody dancing the streets about hope and change on uh, Obama's election. And then as a matter of historical economic course, their lives didn't get better. Yeah. And, right. uh, and, and so that obvious connection is made there. Otherwise, if you're not a politician, it's like Sarah Palin's like, how's all that hope and changey stuff going for right. you? Right. It's and everyone's like, yeah, actually. We indoctrinate everybody so into this dichotomy system where we go like, okay, here's the rock'em robot, here's the sock'em robot. And then, and I, I mean, I, I, I which, like, like this, the, the, this idea that we have to just, we have to defend not voting for Hillary. It's kind of like. It's a default. It's kind it's of a like a macrocosm reaction. of saying at the emergency room, like. Now, honey, you know, like, you made me do that. Well, my dad literally at one point goes, well, I didn't start it. And I was like, what are you, five? And he starts <laughs> laughing. You and know, I'm I didn't like, want to do what's that. What's going on right now? Like, I'm like, you just keep saying, you keep going back to this thing. And I'm like, at a, at a certain point, you got to realize, like, that's over, that's done. No one's trying to take away from you your rationale for why you voted the way you did for this piece of human garbage because you were throwing the dice. But now that he's president, judge him for what he's doing. And he was like, yeah, okay, you know, you're maybe right. And I'm like, okay. Right, and that's so, the like, if I actually understand and I go, like, okay, I think I know why you're making arguments that I know that you don't even believe right now. Like, I know why you're making the excuses that you're making right now. It's like, I know that you don't think that it's okay for a 32-year-old man to fuck a 14-year-old, so why is my father saying that right now? Oh, it's because he's defending the indefensible because he has an idea of some kind of greater good and some greater battle that's happening right now. And, and so he's, he's been making told, excuses. He, in his mind, I would say the people, some of the people who are defending Roy Moore. Uh, Careful, he's a friend. They might. <laughs> b b big friend of the show, too. I right? had no interest in defending Al Franken. Like, and then I read that one article that was like, wait, uh, like, fr w if Franken gets yanked from the picture, um, this is a blow against net neutrality. And then I was like, then that, because I don't care if a senator gets fucking hauled up to the RoboCop or police station desk and forced to fucking account for being a, a, a cr they woke up committing a crime if they're a politician. This is America. If you're a politician, you should already be suspected of everything. And you should, you should wake up with shame because you're getting paid to do fucking jack shit. Right. Um, you're a parasite. Sorry. But, but, but that's, it's, a, it's a cushy gig. You're a fucking politician. Eat my dick. But, uh, and, 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 and wake up every morning in a world where you have to prove that you're not a criminal. Yeah. You're yeah. a politician. Yeah. But then I was like, oh shit, net neutrality. God damn it. Is right. this a goddamn conspiracy? This Republican woman, wait, there's the picture of him doing the titty honk, but his fingers aren't touching her. You can see shadows under them. My mom and I were bonding about this. You can see shadows under them. He's not touching. It's a dude. The, the only other thing is that her story about tongues, and then she got photographed. Anyone watching this from the outside would start to go, would look at me and go, like, 
boy, you Democrats, you'll do anything to... You just love violating women. Well, and I think that this brings up a, a, a really valuable point of discussion where we need to not have it in 140 characters or we need to actually talk to each other about this shit. But, like, yeah. at the, the un- unavoidable truth that we as people on the left can do and should hold ourselves to a higher account than people on the right. And, you know, you don't see Roy Moore uh, getting this much pressure from the right. And, and, and that's not good. That, that the right's doing that. We shouldn't, like, there's no answer to this right now, but it's something to really talk about and think about. But what again, remember, I think that it's because inherently they're trying to defend right. their guy and their party right now, and they're constantly having to do that. So every time one of theirs goes down, they're like... Like fuck, we gotta undo. We gotta make every excuse. We gotta find a way. Uh, they're lying or whatever it is. We're on right. the left. We're going. I'm not mad at the women who accuse Al Franken. Right. I'm like disappointed in Al Franken, yeah. and I'm going like, God damn. Like we need you. You know, like God. How many others might have but fucked up? But if you're really but into net neutrality, you might even be. You might even start to go. Over the weekend, I started to go. Is this a conspiracy? Right. Which, well, it's which happening is now though. I'm defending a sexual like. Now thing you're that, like, now, I could now you're before, just I was like, the same. Like it's the same magical lose. thinking. Yeah. And it's like yeah. Now uh, I'm a zealot. Now my like, guys are all infallible because we're the guys with the right with the white hat on, and right. your guys are all garbage because they have the black hat on because we think that good and evil is a black and white thing. And if you look at like the board, if you look at the whole chessboard, the right has won. All three branches of government. The FCC is probably gonna like. Yeah, there's fucking, nothing we could do. There's nothing we can do. We should so, fight, but there's nothing we could do. Like, like we should absolutely try. But Al Franken isn't gonna change much. Right. I think uh, if you really like pull back and look at how much power the right has. And to your point, which is a really good point, I think that part of this is like these people are conditioned on, on all sides to come at this defensively. Like, like, and that's a problem of the media. That's a problem of online discourse. That's a problem with the way that in which we talk about politics because we get too emotionally invested. Well, and it's the way we talk about each other too, because like right. dehumanization is, yes. I think, at its worst point right now. And by dehumanization, like, for me, you know, it's 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 all about the other, right? And the other would be anybody who's so different from your way of being that they are not human anymore to you. Like, cause you can't form empathy for them, whether that's like, and right now that's as simple as being a Democrat and a Republican. It's yeah. as simple as driving like, a Prius instead of a Ford F-150. Yeah. yeah. Like that's literally, and that's like how, enough how for people to say, not oh, you're understand. not a man. But, you know? Let's make it even simpler because, because let's talk about 25 year olds who can't afford a Prius or a Ford F-150 aren't making that decision. And f- therefore those decisions are actually ideological for them. And, Every day, for better or for worse, whether they should be doing it or not, these people are living online. Yeah. And every every and, and their chimpanzee spinal cords are jacked up by these interactions they're having. I just did it today. I'm f- I'm a 44 year old grown ass man. I got in one fight with my girlfriend while traveling this entire Thanksgiving. All these connecting flights, all this stress. We even high fived each other and even knew we were jinxing it. We didn't fight. We traveled as a couple. We didn't fight. We had one kerfuffle, and it was absolutely centered around I. I got on Twitter. Yep. The, 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 we we so, so but like we can. The important thing seems to be that that the the way that the internet is, the nature of it favors. I'm just going to use simple language. It favors Nazis. It does not favor. Hippies. Right. Um, uh, if you want people to be happy, you are you are you are having to overcome obstacles on the internet. If you want people to be angry, if you want people to be afraid, every step you take, it's like you're on one of those airport conveyor belt things where every step you take takes you five steps further, and and the the left is walking against it because technology until we figure out a way to add a wire to the internet cables that makes you feel what the other person is feeling we're just it's like we're in this pool together and we're just going like like oh i want everybody to be happy and it kind of like touches on your thing and 
I don't know if it's a good thing to use. It, like, like we should use this as an example, though, because it's like you're clearly you're you're on a blue streak. You're a charismatic, amazing voice to have out there. You're a comedian that is a dedicated socialist. And maybe I'm just drunk, or maybe I like you, but like I, I it's like wow, you're a weapon in the arsenal of, <laughs> of, 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 of g- making the shit work. And and yet, through no one's fault, really, except for the way we operate versus how the enemy operates, um, you you had to resign from an official position because of a joke you made. Because we can't, if you're interested in equality, uh, you can't. That doesn't merge well with the, the jokes. less tolerance is being used against us right now. And we're the also fact that we stand for all of that equality and we want everything to be like fair and all of these things that they call us a snowflake for is absolutely being used against us, particularly online. And then the moment that we get as ugly as they do and go, okay, let's let's tussle in the mud then, let's get down and dirty here. They go, oh, look who's triggered yeah. and like, where's your tolerance now? Mm. Like so much so, for the tolerant left. So much for the tolerant left. Look at you, you're all mad. It's so easy to trigger you, like. Also, it, so in the meantime, you guys can't even get along with each other. Right. Well, look, look, look at all these women arguing with each other about blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you expect us to take this seriously? You guys can't even stop pillow fighting about this. You know, it's just right. condescending. Like, mm-hmm. like look, you, you're not you're not an army. Well, to to the point specifically about my my thing, um, I I fucked up in allowing ammo for that. I tweeted a thing, right. a Bill Cosby joke that a. Now, I agree with people, like it was right after the Weinstein thing, and no woman needs to go online and see some fucking white dudes posing with Bill Cosby's star. Like, I see how people would be upset. And I gave them a context-free way for everybody to get mad at me. From the right to the left, like, you know, oh, you're a fucking pussy for apologizing and resigning. Oh, you know, like, how dare you? And and truly, I, uh, as a... I'm not a politician. I thought I was a politician. I thought that I could be in this position where you're going to be judged so harshly on everything you say and everything you say represents this group. And I made it very clear in that moment, no, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to have the DSA's reputation on the hook for me because I'm a comedian and I'm a writer and and so I inherently take certain risks and fall on my face. And when I do that in front of a crowd, 40 to 100 people don't like me. But when I do it on Twitter as the face of the DSA, that could bring down the left uh, if, you know, weaponized correctly. And so I see where things, you know, uh, where it made a lot of sense for me to resign. On the other side of that spectrum, like you said, if you know who I am and you know the context, nobody in the local chapter that knows me got super upset with that. Uh, nobody who is like my friend, nobody who knows that I was making a reference to taking con- uh, Confederate statues down knows that I led a charge to get the Confederate statue taken down at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. But that's my fuck up for giving them this ammo. So we, like, especially within our leadership, need to hold ourselves to an even higher standard. And so what I want to do now is sort of just be a little bit more of a Steve Bannon, but good, where you can help people say things and take what is the internet what is the internet good for i think it's good for like radicalizing and ideology and you see podcasts and and it's bad for that too well it's bad for that if if it's bad ideology it's good it's good pure like like morally ambiguous radicalization whether it's for isis or for the good guys like the internet can do that and i think the democrats and a big reason why i'm upset with the democrats is that they they won the culture war, but they ceded the ideological battle for no fucking reason. They got rid of union halls, which was the one place where uh, people, like poor people, people of color, working class people, met up and talked face to face. And then on the internet, all it is is fucking gifts and the West Wing and Harry Potter references. There's no, there's no ideology, and that's what socialism, and specifically for me, democratic socialism, gives me, is it gives me this fuel to understand, oh, this is happening because of this. I know, because this guy that I like fucking told right. me this, or this woman who rules taught me this thing just by watching her do it. Well, so, okay. So I know, I, I know, I know you're saying, like, first and foremost, Consider getting off the internet more and more. Yeah. Um, uh, it will always be there. It runs everything. You can get caught up within a moment. Yep. You could spend an entire week off of, off of Twitter, from my experience, and not a lot has changed. That's not... 
That's not the same as telling you you're wrong for currently being on it not or anything all. like that. It's just or like, to tune out and stop being informed either. That's right. not tuning out it's and in, stopping being yeah, informed. Yeah, and, and and so, but however, and then there's so there's that. It's like everybody experiment with like like start spending more time in the real world and uh, blah blah blah. Um, for those of us who are just going to do tomorrow what we did yesterday, but 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 want to put like one tag for our tag cloud, one little piece of awareness. Mm. on on how we spend tomorrow and sadly we're going to spend tomorrow texting tweeting posting reacting commenting arguing fighting getting mad getting scared acquiescing to that saying that's how we're going to behave tomorrow what's what is there some kind of little algorithm some kind of little call to consciousness that harms nothing threatens nothing demands almost nothing just yes it, it, that where, where every interaction everything you see online every way that you're reacting to it internally and every co conflict you start getting in on a, on a uh, comment section like is there some kind of so what i've done personally that's really helped me is you you have to recognize that national media focuses on national storylines that you can't affect. You can't change this huge thing. So what I've done is I've stopped watching cable news. Cable news, inherently, it's only there to scare you and make you buy, you know, fucking Centrum Silver or whatever. Uh, and, and to delegitimize fringe voices in yes. favor of corporate uh, status quo. Absolutely. But where am I going to find out whether or not I can sue somebody for mesothelioma? <laughs> uh, game Show Network. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the Game Show Network is the only channel I watch, and that's what you should do. <laughs> these, these no fuckers, whammies. These fuckers want you to sue them or sue somebody for mesothelioma. Like, it's crazy. Are They're going to find are, you. Are you suggesting, though, because I is it like suggesting that people... Pay attention to Trump in in only how he can entertain you by being an idiot. Is because there a way to start shifting over for all of us Facebook, Twitter addicted, Tumblr addicted, yes. everybody? Like, so we could shift over to local. These things all have local yes roots, and and it all starts at the local level. So it, it, there is a DSA chapter or PSL, which is the Party for Socialism and Liberation. There are progressive groups. If you don't have like a socialist, like find the most leftmost people in your community. You could follow groups on Twitter yeah. that are the DSA, local... Yeah, DSA uh, uh, Los Angeles, DSA, you know... And then your Twitter feed is going to be injected with such a little bit of... Uh, right. Oh, the Los Feliz Boulevard, uh, well, this is happening there. At the yeah. corner of this and that, you're going to go, whoa, that's just down the block from my house. Exactly. And, and that might start a kind of, you might actually decide one day you got nothing to do and like you know the address they're talking about. You know the, the, the shopping center that, that where this is happening. and that. Right. That, so so what will happen is like uh, an account, a DSA account or, or one of these other leftist accounts will retweet about a state bill. And a state, like state bills are where power is in your state. Like we live in a country that allows a lot of states' rights. There was a big fight about it a couple hundred years ago. Uh, but I generally disagree with it, but it's with, what we have. It's what we have. And so using what we have, we can um, look at, at a situation. Have you, have any of you ever called a state representative? Yeah, a couple times. I did one oh wait, time. no, no, What's not, once? that's not, not that's no, not a U.S. not a U.S. congressman, right. not no, a I've not a, a senator, yeah. a state a senator, state rep. Right. The only people that call state senators are like, excuse me, my mailman's too, too Chinese. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're the craziest people in the world, and there are these really important bills going through California. For example, has a Medicare for all bill that's been shelved, but with enough popular pressure, could be brought back. These people, like when you call your state representatives, not your national representatives, they're so happy to not be talking to a blind racist, to fucking Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino, because those are the people who call. And your your efforts, you know, it takes fucking, it takes effort to go on your lunch break and look up the number and fucking, because you're working all the time, to find the phone number to call for Nancy Pelosi to just ignore you, or fucking Dianne Feinstein to not even fucking pick up the phone. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and literally, uh, we, there was somebody in LADSA that sent a pizza with pepperoni spelling out, like, our message to them, because they wouldn't, there was like, don't uh, confirm, uh, what's the guy that looks like the Keebler elf? 
uh, Sessions. Dennis, Sessions. Dennis Kucinich? Oh, yeah. I'm dating myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, to get through to those people is so hard. But you, as an individual, look at where your power lies. Your power lies in your community. And so if you just change the trajectory and make a call a week about an issue that it's like, look and see what state measures are but going on. But it also on. might be helpful to say, your life lies at the local level. Yes. Like, like, like if you actually become one of these people, and I think we've encountered old people that we kind of, we're like, what's with them? Like, they're so passionate about the fucking twigs and gathering on the street corners or whatever. Like, well, become the cool version of one of those people. Yeah. And you'll be following your comfort level because it's your neighborhood. And you'll also like, it because I think also it's like, if you're thinking the whole time, well, I'm going to I'm going to hand this blanket or this taillight to this person and in so doing, I'm going to take down Trump. You're going to get frustrated every time you right. come home to 900 Trump tweets. Exactly. Um and and feel like you're acting in futility. But um uh all right. Well, goddamn. I mean, And one uh, one last thing if if you don't yeah, mind. Go go, um, go for it. And also like like fucking talk go, what the Jesus. Oh shit. Jeff's a secret um, alt-right um, <laughs> agent who's trying to <laughs> undercut your message. Uh, I, I, I've said this before, but like the reason the Tea Party won is because they... Serve tea. They don't watch prestige television and they don't fuck. Like, that's the reason why they won. They, they, all they do is this. <laughs> and, but there are so many fewer of them than there are us. Mm -hmm. So if we just do a little bit, you can still fucking watch The Deuce. James Franco's surprisingly good in it. Uh, and you can still watch fucking, well, you know, whatever shows you want to watch or be on Bumble or fucking whatever. But just like once a week, just like look and see what's going on in your community and do that. And if enough of us give, I mean, and that's what socialism's all fucking about. It's enough of us working a little bit so that the rest of us don't have to work super fucking hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that fundamentally is the way that we need to look at the world. And All you right. can you can go to city like public hearings and stuff too, like local government. Yeah. I don't know, like on NPR you always hear like, Oh, we're it's seven PM on a Tuesday, so we're gonna take you now to the Santa Monica City Hall where a bunch right. of people are gonna get mad about parking. And like you can be one of those people mad about parking and you can have a lot better ideas. And it's not like well, I mean it's the same thing about like these races calling like the state senators. Right. It's like the people who go there are generally crazy old people with stupid concerns. Yep. And I bet that a lot of people are, you know, willing to hear reasonable concerns from less stupid people. Right. And and the proof of that right now is that um like through uh, Divest LA and definitely check out Divest LA and Public Bank LA um if you live in Los Angeles and and there there's great public bank movements in the Bay Area and all across the country. Um like they they did exactly that. They went to a local city council meeting and, and and various local neighborhood council meetings and were like, hey, we have this idea and it generated enough. Um, and this was directly in response to the pipeline shit, the Dakota Access Pipeline, right. Wells Fargo's involvement in that. And what happened was without any real like stalling or anything, like a smooth, smooth ride, uh, the city... Uh, City Council unanimously voted to divest $40 million from Wells Fargo. And it was just like a couple people that like look like us that just you know, showed up. That just showed up and we're like talking about it. And then, you know, next thing you know, the world is billions of dollars better. And 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 that's where it counts. It turns out we have good ideas. Yeah. Well, I felt like my initial instinct was, okay, I'm gonna have I, I, I had my Eleanor Democrat on, and I have my. I'm gonna have the DSA on, and I'm gonna have Antifa on. I'm never gonna have a Nazi on. I, I, I but, but, it, you know, much as I met Spencer by asking, is there a dungeon master here? I feel like you're not, you know, we're not being indoctrinated into any cult or or political party when we talk about uh, acting locally and all this right. stuff. And and you're very charismatic and 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 unthreatening. Um, you're definitely decoagulating my defense mechanisms. Um, and therefore, let's say you're L.A. based, right? Yeah. Let's have you back. Sure. Sooner than later, because let's start the conversation at like, what should we do, like, like yeah. locally? Because then, like, locally can mean locally everywhere that everyone's watching, <laughs> and it doesn't. Jesus Christ, he hates. He's really he hates, trying. <laughs> he hates progress. He um, loves symbols. But uh, uh, and so, let, give us one more time, I guess, maybe the the, the website if people want to just. Start. Yeah, um, I mean, dsausa.org is the national website. You can follow DSA on Twitter uh, on. 
on DSA LA is dsa-la.org. But I encourage you, I'm not here to tell you just to join the DSA. Right. There's, those are the people that I found that... Most are, importantly, because I think the biggest thing that's going to trigger people is like, we're, we're, not, we're not Bernie Broen necessarily here. No, I, and there are people that are... Um, you know, Okay, so what the thing that made me join is I went uh, with a friend of mine to a meeting right after the election. And I was like... Uh, you know, I'll give these guys a shot. Let's see what happens. And I saw a bunch of fucking white dudes with glasses and various forms of facial hair that look like they listen to podcasts all the time. And I was like, okay, okay. It's like a bunch of guys like me or whatever. And then um, the the person that was leading the meeting, the chair at the time, was this amazing witchy old woman uh, named Carol, who I love, who is like one of the greatest women uh, in the history of politics. Uh, she flipped over a bus uh, during an anti-Vietnam protest and just kept the seat warm. Because knowing- her baby was under it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, okay. That's why she had the magic, uh, the power. So way, I yeah. don't approve of female strength uh, on physical levels. No, no, no. She's a regular She-Hulk. And um, she, <laughs> so she, uh, she said, like, okay, who's here? Who doesn't really necessarily vibe with DSA, but is just here for, you know, just to see what's up? And this guy came up, and he was like, I'm a Democrat, and I am not going to change that at any time. He's like an older man. And he was like, I just want to be somewhere and, and with a group of people that can help point me in the right way to help change the Democratic Party. Is it okay if I, I'm in here? And and there were like kind of like Snickers, like, you know, a little bit. And then Carol walks up and goes, now I'm sure a lot of you disagree with this tactic. I'm sure a lot of you disagree with uh, working within the Democratic Party. And we're like nodding our heads. And she's like, how many of you are willing to do the work that he's going to do in the Democratic Party? And we were all like, uh, not me <laughs> and she's like right so we have a big tent where it's called a big tent organization where if no matter what your level of involvement is no matter what your politics are if you want to help locally on issues that i guarantee you you agree with uh everything from like hey maybe we shouldn't put spikes under uh overpasses so homeless people can't live in <laughs> under our precious overpasses mitch o'farrell city council person of los angeles uh like, uh, you, you'll find that, and then beyond that, you'll be able to find, like, we don't just, we're not an amorphous blob. We have our Housing and Homelessness Committee, which is focused on doing things like um, Street Watch, which cops go and illegally fuck up homeless encampments. People that have a job and a computer and a phone and are right there ready to get a fucking apartment, they'll go in and bust all their shit and break all their shit completely illegally. So we have a couple people who are comfortable uh, waking up at four in the morning when we have a Google number gets called and says there's a sweep coming and they just stand there with their phones and they just videotape and the cops don't fuck with people. So like if that interests you, you can do that. If you're into healthcare, if you're into uh, prison abolition, who's, who's doing a lot of great work with our mutual aid group on the taillight benefit like all of there's all these different causes and maybe just maybe if what you're really good at is sitting in your in front of your computer and following your kind of anger and outrage and trolling people there might even be a job for you yeah. that actually ends up you know you can use those skills if you want to feel like you're fucking with you people. know what's the best thing in the world fucking real life trolling we ruined Mayor Garcetti's election party because he was capitulating with Trump <laughs> and not, uh, he, he wasn't uh, calling Los Angeles a sanctuary city, which right. by the way, it still fucking isn't. Um, and yeah. so he was letting our, because he wants the Olympics so fucking bad, he was letting yeah. the cops work hand in hand with ICE and fuck people over. There was this big story that I'm not sure if you remember in Highland Park where a dude was literally dropping his daughter off. He right. had a DUI 40 years ago. It's the only crime he ever committed. Uh, and he was just snatched. And he was one of the first ones. Yeah, Romulo was his name. And mm-hmm. he luckily, because of public pressure, was let out. But in, in response to this, we used our anger and we found out, well, shit, the mayor is getting elected uh, in what is going to be a landslide. It might as well be running on a post. He's throwing a big party. It's a boring election with a lot of press. Let's go fuck it up. And so a hundred of us showed up and started yelling about getting ice out of Los Angeles, and we had people infiltrate and interrupt his speech. And then what ended up happening was people that worked for the mayor came out to us, like during the party, like kind of were like, hey, um, keep doing stuff like this, please, because we never get pressure from the left. It's always pressure from the right. And so we kept pressuring on, and granted, this wasn't our idea. We had 
groups like that organized undocumented people that are on the front lines who can't go be so fucking confrontational with the mayor. But we, as a group of mostly white people, can use our privilege to amplify their voices and put ourselves in the way of jail time, which they're not gonna arrest a bunch of fucking white people. Like, that's just not how cops work. Uh, and so we, we yelled and we yelled and we yelled and we yelled, and two weeks later, he passed Special Order 40, which makes it so that no Los Angeles city official can uh, collaborate with ICE. Right. And it's like, that's trolling that fucking works. Right. That's just you being, we literally did the Simpsons, Eric, Eric, while he was getting his fucking makeup on. <laughs> and and it was fun and and there may be people out there that don't they're like well I don't want to do that I don't right. want to be a troll and all that stuff but and, and so there's but there's then my you can give like, um, low income women rides to abortion clinics because people do that too there's every personality it's like when you start when you when you run a TV show you go like there's there's people who love writing fanfic like f 500 pages of what if stuff there's people who just who, who hate those people mm -hmm. but they can love the same TV show I'm translating this into my own <laughs> fucking no, narcissistic true. thing. Is that is the the that so anyways I, I I hate to I don't want to be the guy that cuts off the guy that's it's like fine. passionate and is like do, do, doing good by talking so but we're we, if if we cut into D and D time we'll be oh, undercutting shit. the entire DSA yes um they'll be the reason DSA. we didn't play D and D uh, <laughs> but 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 let's I mean let's resolve that like whether it's like a segment you come back for ten minutes of uh, 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 per show or whatever and and like sure. like help help me like f reform myself as a locally active uh, uh, person. I'm too drunk. I'm making too many promises. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but something. Where we have you back very soon. Like I really appreciate thank your you. willingness, yeah, it's, it, in, especially in light of how you know. Just hearing about your recent like, kind of brush up against the the PC thing and how that must fucking suck for somebody that just wants to be. Uh, I, 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 you, you're you're a hero to me because you clearly care about this stuff enough to keep like plunging along uh, uh, and, and and actually saying this shit. Um, well, so the, the, the movement's more important than me. Yeah. And so ultimately, the reason that I resigned is it was like I don't want to be a weight. That's on a the movement, threshold I'd love gonna... to cross. Uh, and maybe maybe you can help me the way like you I'd know Brandon and Duncan carry... like help me like stay positive positive instead of negative and stuff but so let's uh, uh, go, go, uh, thank you Josh Androsky for, for coming you. by we'll see you again soon and uh, thank you for dressing like Spencer yeah and just again he's not officially uh, spokesperson for the DSA. He if just, uh, they, they again, didn't step up to the plate. If it gets your dander up, there might be a couple. I, I, I'm sympathetic Everything gets if you're my like, like, oh, I'm a Harmontown fan. I don't. I, I, I delineate that from politics. So what I don't like is for my Harmontown episode to be entirely about um, politics. I, sure, I sympathize with that. I would submit to you, I do not know what Harmontown is supposed to be, which is why sometimes it, it is something that you find amazing. And I think there are probably some people that are orgasming right now because we finally, like, we walked the walk a little bit in terms of a booking and like, holy shit, that was a, that was a signal to boost, I think, because I've been babbling forever about um, acting locally and all this shit, and I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And so making a friend that actually knows how to walk that walk is important to me, and what's important to me should be important to you. So fuck you, Julie. Yeah, Julie. With your joint dangling from your mouth, <laughs> thinking Harmontown's so great, but only when he raps about fucking my mama. <sighs> is Steve Levy here tonight? No, no. which is why... We need to replace him with. Let's bring Rob Schraub back up. Rob Schraub! Oh, yeah. Almost there. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. He put a chair on the stage. Oh, look at him. He's rolling about. Rob, since you have wheels. Go get our uh, character sheets for us, would you? Rough, rough shop is going to dab Ross's way across our stage. Hurt. This might hurt him. <laughs> Rob Shop is nothing if not a showman. Uh, 
Rob Shop gathering up our character sheets. Going to hand Dan Dan's character sheets. And uh, just a side note, if you want to join the D&DSA, you can roll your character <laughs> sheet. We're using standard point by arrays. And, uh, oh, man. I have some psionic like, classes are off the table. I have an exciting thing to talk to you about role-playing-wise. Uh-huh. So this guy um, who I talked to for, I guess, probably a hot Adderall vodka-induced hour and a half or so following one of our shows. Mm-hmm. And I was just talking to him about that Blacksburg Technical Research Center game, uh, Space Time and uh, Time Lords. Remember I babbled to you about that, like this role-playing game that I... Anyways, he... Where you're playing yourself? He... Yes. Okay. Where you play yourself. So this is a system where you you approximate your own real-life attributes. Is is Rob going to play Steve? Is Rob playing uh, Diary of Junior? I mean, he'll do whatever he wants, regardless (laughs) of what anyone attempts or desires. He certainly is doing it right now. If you haven't paid five dollars a month for, to, for our yep. subscription, you're missing out on one of life's great treasures. This has mostly been a non-visual <laughs> show, but these these couple of minutes are certainly a phenomenon he's, he's, unto itself. He's, he's, I'm really worried he's going to hurt himself. Like he's just going to roll off the off the stage. I, I, I hope that happens. Oh, it could be like All one. Right. That's the thing about a rolling chair on a on a platform. Like one wheel goes off the edge, and I don't care if you're Jackie Chan, you're you're dead. <laughs> but why err on the side of that, you know? All right. Let's have fun. We're so, all going to die. So, Spencer, it, R- Rob, are, are you going to play the role of Steve Levy? As yeah, what do you want to do, Rob? Sure. Or do you want to be an NBC? What, what do you want to be? A uh, what? A, a non-player character. NBC. I'll, I'll be a n- non-player character because... Uh, 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 I'd like to Were you that. disappointed? You came to the you come to the show, and then there's a guy. It's like uh, I'm talking politics, and you, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna come anymore. What are you talking about? No, I'm just like sharing my insecurities. Yeah, like, we want to know what you're uh, feeling. I like it when you show up. You're. I, you're I, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm Oh, I've had a rough couple of days. And oh, wait, wait, what do you mean? Why? What? Yeah, let's talk about that. I'll, talk, I'll tell you about it later, but it's, it's not, I'm, I'm fine. Now. Is it Lolly sick? No. Is Kate sick? No, 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 no. Wait, well, what's, what? it, what's going on? <laughs> no, no, I'll talk. No, no, it's oh. not for the stage. Oh, okay. It could no. be. What? Let's act it out. Okay. It's your boss. I'm really out of breath from doing all that leg. I was work. out of breath from dancing, and then I had to start rapping, and I was like, man, I can't even fucking breathe. It's a bummer. Yeah. What a life. This mic is uh, quieter than the others. Well, it's because That's when normal. you. But the genius thing is that the the. the oh, the, because the, it's me. Well, no, the str- yeah. <laughs> the streamers. It, it's like we're. It's it's unmistakably a live performance. But then when you listen to it, and I have, like, and this goes to Zach and Chris, like, I mean, they're walking a fucking crazy tightrope. They're recording streaming live audio that it that when you listen back to it, it sounds like a real podcast episode. Like, it's not compromised by the fact that we're doing it in a warehouse. But I think as performers, we benefit from visually from being in this space as opposed to the audio booth. Thank you for bringing that up so I can give props to our amazing engineers. I, I, I have a, uh, a a little bit of a business housekeeping question. Okay. Who farted? <laughs> I don't know. It, it really smells like When? Me. It really smells like a fart. Oh, recently. Do you, do you, do you think it was Josh Andrasky from the DSA? <laughs> it's or was, your girlfriend? That was a long time ago. I th- I th- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to This is wrong. a present fart. No, it wasn't me because somebody, the minute you started going, somebody farted. I, okay, I'd like to ask a question. I almost said, who... Oh, it well, it beeched. had to be Josh then, because I didn't smell anything, so it Smelled, had to be Josh. Smells like it's either beef. Jeff and in an incredible no, I was, yeah, it's we, gotta we, be, I, werewolf game I, I feel level like it's of gotta manipulation. Be Jeff. I would either not, <laughs> not bring it up, or I would say, sorry, everybody, I farted all over Using you. Using my werewolf skills that always get me taken out within the third round, I think that, yeah, I think Jeff did it. I didn't do it, I swear to God. I'm not accusing you of doing <laughs> it, I'm I just would, saying that I that's... some even more old up. world rules than that. Whoever smelt it. Dealt it, I believe. And whoever denied it supplied it, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Guys, 
<laughs> somebody, somebody farted on me. Somebody farted on me, and I thought we all needed to address that. No, we uh, should, but I just, I'm just thinking about the options, and in my head, it's got to be one of you two. Well, it's certainly Rob. Well, because if I it was it. me, it'd be really obvious. Well, that's because yes. I, I, you I, were rolling around crop dusting. I didn't. I swear to God. I know. You that's why know. it's too obvious to be you. That's why <laughs> I think I it must be Jeff. If I farted all over the stage, I would be the first to say, "Sorry, everybody." I sneak attack. It j- I don't know if it's a fart because it keeps on rolling. Because like as it you could be like a Burbank thing. Yeah, I mean as you've been We're talking, by it's been kind of like yeah. wafting it, through it, 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 it here a couple been, times. It's been wafting and roiling through the fucking stage. It Just could like be the shrub so was rolling around the stage. Yeah, but I didn't. They start making the farts at Burbank like did. early, like <laughs> the early shift. I swear to God that might be it. So or that you that can get your fresh f- Burbank yeah. farts. I swear to God, it was six a.m. I'm not blaming anybody. I just felt like somebody farted on my head. I'm Do not you remember you. the tannery? I was just in Milwaukee. Yeah. God. Milwaukee. Oh, how was there. the how was the 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 college talk? Uh, my art school talk was great, life changing. Did you like amazing. Dan's intro? Did you use it? Yes, I did. Uh, everybody applaud. The, the full edit. <laughs> no, he's this is the, a nice one. He's the, the nice only one. non-rapping the topping one. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's. I mean, we the assumed that were a failure. Happen, the raps right? were a failure. They use, weren't a failure. They were just the, a different did, did take. Did he use the rap where he uh, rhymed Bukaki? No. No. Okay. He didn't use any None of the raps. Of the raps. He, used the, he used the verbal one. The verbal one. This guy is going to swivel in a chair and tell me he didn't fart on me. <laughs> I did this, not this guy, fart on so you. you don't seems like that's guilty. You if I farted on you, chair. you would know you because know I'd be going, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Five dollars. In Florida, um, as if they didn't have enough troubles. <laughs> Um, sometimes their tap water is just smells like a fart. Like oh. I like outside my hotel, uh, I was like, what's that fart smell? And then my parents would be like, well, that's just tide. You know, tide comes in, goes out when it goes out, leaves dead stuff. Milwaukee, we're no stranger to that. The dead alewives there, they smell like rotting fish. The tannery. Uh, but the tap water, like I was brushing my teeth one morning and then I brush my teeth and then I go in and I, I cup and I, I slurp my rinsing water out of the tap. What? Is this like the standing wiper thing? I'm going to find we, out I do the... We I have, t- we have 10 minutes to play D&D. So, right. so, Spencer, you want, you want to catch us up? Uh, yeah. Honestly, what happened, you guys? Dan, do you remember anything that we happened? Fought, I remember fighting zombies um, as we just got to the town of Ember Embershot. Yeah, I think what happened is you were just on the cusp of the town of Embershot, which, whose name will be revealed. Um... <laughs> Great. Uh, I remember we fought the sorry. zombies. Yeah, sorry, and listening audience. We were successful in fighting them in the sense that they either ran away or were killed. Yeah, that was all that happened, right? Because you set up that you were outside of the town. Yeah, that's what was confusing. Is I was like, did it more happen? And the answer was no. So last time, y'all found some zombies. There was music coming from a harp, and it was, it kind of made the zombies bummed out it was bumming there was music bumming out the zombies and skeletons in a graveyard and diarrhea jr went to investigate the sound that was uh the music sound and when he did there was a burst of ruby light and then the music stopped and as if on cue the zombies stopped being all bummed out and started well just being you know generally mindless zombies trying to end all life as we know it and you guys, as clerics and members of the church militant, fought them and killed them. That was that was it, yeah. Uh, combat takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so where are we standing right now? You're outside of the graveyard. You're standing over the white ashes of the, the skeleton that uh, you cut down with your flame blade spell. All right. That was... Uh, Fucking flame blade. Yeah, that was what uh, Chad did. So, zombies... No more music. No more zombies. Well, nighttime. Looks like we got here either just in time or... And I take off my mime glasses. (laughs) Or too late. (laughs) Yeah! Yeah. Won't get fooled again! Well, we got here in time to kill a bunch of fucking zombies. Yeah, but why are they running rampant? Where'd that music come from? I mean, who knows? This could be. Let's let's head into. Let's head into town. You know, from your knowledge of religion, 
Yeah, that's for you. Is it? Yeah, you can ask you're real questions. You're playing. You're, you're, playing you're, character. you're playing Levy's character, right? Yeah. What are you? Well, that's not what we said before the music started. Well, so we can clear up we'll anything you want. No. I'm here to you help and answer that, you questions. You gotta eat that mic, bro. Uh, this is not for everyone to hear. You gotta eat that mic, bro. Eat, eat my fucking mic, Jeff. All right, I'm eating so the mic. What, what was so your question? You asked me earlier, mm-hmm. would I like to be Steve Levy's character or a new character? And right. And I said, I don't I'd remember be a new character. I'd be a new uh, game character, whatever. You really gave him that option? No, I don't. I don't yeah, think. No, that I that's did. not. No one gave you that option. Okay. I don't want to argue. All right. Well, like, no, it's nobody possible. remembered having that conversation. No one offered to don't. make a new character for no, you. No, that's okay, whatever. We're doing this. We got, we got seven minutes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So everybody, just stand back. I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Shit. Okay. What's this? I start kicking the bones that are in front of me. I start kicking it. I go, <laughs> look at this. What a mess. Look at the mess you made here. This is great. Yeah. Terrific. I'm gonna. Play now, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna play. The what big, are we doing? One of those war movie things where it's like he's. It's like a PTSD thing, and I'm like gonna cradle him and go. Shh. Uh, shh no. Hey. 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 No, hey. Hey. No, listen no. to me, man. You gotta look at me. <laughs> This world is magical. A lot of that magic is dark. It's all right. I've been through pain. I was raised by pain. We all met through a church. That church ain't perfect. We're here to clean up this town. Can't even remember why the fuck we're here. <laughs> That's a great question to ask. Who I can said that? that? It was because of the. We're on the quest to, to, of Patch's Jewel. The quest of Patch's Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> a a a a third party Linux quest that wasn't approved of. <laughs> well, it was approved of. Well, yeah, it's I don't an wanna, open source quest. Yeah, I don't want to get into the minutia. It's okay. very complicated. We're, uh, we're, we're on the uh, the quest of Patchens. <laughs> the quest for Patchens gem. Patchens gem. Yeah, Patchens, who was your good friend and helped yeah. you out in yeah. uh, Don't Roan, he uh, he got robbed. Yeah. In part because you guys. Let him get stabbed a bunch. And, and we feel guilty about that, so we're going to go get this gem. We're going to get yeah. the gem Did back. Did we have to kill some zombies along the way? Yes. yes. We fucking did. Yes. So uh, now it's time to put the pedal to the mother. <laughs> I'm going. Metal. You guys are, I'm going to start looking. I'm going to, ri- I'm walking. He's walking. I'm walking away. He's walking towards the gem. I'll figure it out. I'll find it. <laughs> I feel so bad about this, but I don't remember if Patchens is with us. Patchens is here, yeah. Okay. He didn't. He was kind of quiet in that last right, fight. But guys, but here's the thing. Patchens has been overtly critical of our ability to help him in the past, well, we, and I, we are we, not. We've proven him right. I feel that. like <laughs> you put me in a position where honesty implies brutal criticality. Yeah, I don't I know, know that I, know, I wanted I know, to I'm, be in those situations. I'm saying to my party members, I'm going, guys, if the goal is to g- make Patchens go... Uh, what? <laughs> I think our goal is let's let's keep it simple. Let let's let's help Patchens out. Let's do one thing right. What? Patchens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wh- I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. We just got to a new town. Yeah. There's no direct like linear mission. I think what we should do is we the only people that have seen us together mm-hmm. are zombies. They're dead. They've fled. We killed them. We should do that thing, like in the beginning of the third, the the Return of the Jedi. Right. Okay? We show up one by one in this town. Wait for everybody to take a nap. Well, don't start, like, let's not get sidetracked by our critical grievances with that movie but 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 i'm just saying like their strategy was just like we just we don't come in together we don't go hey we're the rebel alliance we're here to free han solo right right, right. Like, we 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 just show up in different guises just different, disguising this, and we and we don't acknowledge part. the only rule is we just don't acknowledge that we know each other the one rule is that we don't acknowledge that we know each other. We and don't acknowledge that we know until each other. Until it's time, time to, to make shit happen. Hey, I came back. Oh, boy. Oh, right. Hi. He, was, he was off mic. Hi. So we're going to go into town. Let's, let's give 10-minute waits between each of us entering yeah. town. I'll go first. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, Diarrhea, you, you go in first. I'll go first. Bye. Now, just... And just, you don't know us. Hold my hands just, up. You just, don't know us. No, blend in. Ah, 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 be a ah. 
Okay. And all you're going to do is just, you, you don't have an agenda. You're not, you're not on any kind of you're case. Just you're just gonna, should I go to a store? Sure. You could go to the saloon. You could go to the thing. I'll go to the saloon store. Just try to ingratiate yourself with locals. Yeah. All right. The sun begins to rise as you see the outer wall of Dornest. I'll Nester. take a beer. That's the name of the town. The outer wall. The wall is thick and only about ten feet high, but it's like make it's mostly like a big pile of like lumber and dirt and stuff. It's kinda like a beaver dam. It's just kinda like a big a big mess of a big thick wall kinda surrounding the city. It, it has a bit of break bracing structure and kinda like a bit on top that you walk on that's more flat. But it's just kinda like a giant barricade surrounding the whole town. You're you're in front of the gate and there's two guards. Well they they seem like they're guards, but they're not wearing uniforms or anything. And they're sitting on top of the gate. You look at them, and you can tell they're sleeping. They're sleeping on the job in the morning. Hey! Hey! They slowly wake up as if out of a stupor, and they, they're they squinting in the sunlight and looking around. They, they, they spot you. Hey, can I get in? Uh, what what's your business here? I I need to I there's some stuff in there I have to get. Just open the door. I gotta go. I gotta go. You don't look like you're from around here. Why should we yeah, let you in? Yeah, just open the door. I I forgot my thing. You forgot your thing? I forgot my. Th you know my what are the thing? I don't know what they're called. You put it around your your shirt. You put it around your shirt. Just can you open it? I'm in a hurry here. Right. Yeah. I'm no sorry problem. to wake you up. Next to the door handle, but can you open it up so I can get my... Th I, oh. It's really early. Just we open up the door. Yeah, no, I get it. We Sometimes you forget your thing. <laughs> Thank you. Open you. the door. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you can see as you're walking in, they're kind of falling back asleep. <laughs> That's how you Wait, he, he got in? Yeah, he got in. <laughs> All right. But we don't know this. You know, we, don't, we didn't observe his techniques. You we didn't know. He rolled a 20. Yep. Oh, yeah. A 20 what? 20? Mm -hmm. A 20 lying. Tw a 20 of fucking <laughs> pulling some shit. I'm going to use that. Line All right. So, and now my lot. plan was like, we just go individually because it's like, we don't, we just want to, we just want to. We want to cast a wide net because I feel like our mission is infiltration. I mean, I I, I walk up uh, ten minutes later. I walk up to the to the guards and I go, uh, "Hey, uh, could you guys let me in?" Uh, they wake up. Uh, you you look like you're like a knight or something. What do you got? You sh what are you doing? No, I, I I'm 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 just a uh, I, I, my my friend just came through here. I uh, I'm I'm his assistant. He left his uh, ID. And I want to make sure he has his stuff. I, I'm not even staying. I just want to make sure he has his thing. The guards fall asleep while you're talking. All right. So I walk through. It's a closed door, though. All right. How, how tall is the door? It's 10 feet high. It, it looks very easy to scale. I scale the door. All right. All right. Yeah. It's very easy to sneak past the sleeping guards. It's, it's, uh, it's about like 9 in the morning, and they're still sleeping. You don't know. They seem like they might have slept through the night shift. <coughs> I walk back, I scale back over the door and, and just call uh, Carlos and say, like, hey, the, 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 it's easy. Don't. Huh? Don't. Just, we're not supposed to. <laughs> You're blowing your cover. Don't. I'm, okay. I, I, I just, go. I, I get back inside. All right. All right. Now I, after, my, and then I, and then I approach the gates. The guards are sleeping. Hear ye. They 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 wake what? up with a start and they grab their spears and they're like holding their spears like hey get it fuck off what are you doing I request entry to Dornaster on a diplomatic and religious mission for the Church of the Silver Flame. The door fee is three copper. Hmm. I wonder if the church approves that fee or should it go into your local fund? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're. Nevertheless, talking about, I shall pay it. All right. One of the guards falls asleep, and the other one, he, he holds his spear down, and the spear's like holding a bucket that you can put the money into. Mm. Interesting how weapons are adapted to commerce in times of peace. <laughs> the guard falls asleep, and the bucket falls on the ground. Whoa. <laughs> um, wake up. Wait. Ch check, see if there's, uh, how, how much money's in that bucket. Well, it's my... There's only his money. It's my money. <laughs> well, take your money back. Get, 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 Hello? 
No. They w- they wake back up, huh? You what? you you're so accustomed to taking bribes, you fell asleep during it. That sounds right. Yes, please let me in so I can not report you to the church. All right, just just go away. They open the door. I pocket th- my copper. All right, so, so and my integrity. We're, hey. we're, 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 no, just hey, don't. I'm hiding behind the the. The bushes. Just the idea was for us to arrive well, as don't, if we were. Don't give me away. I can't. I'm not. Pretty cool getting in mm-hmm. here, yes. huh? Yeah. They were asleep. Yeah. The idea was. <laughs> all right. So so we're all inside now. <laughs> yeah. All, we're all inside. But and it's right. it's ten oh three. So let's. You're clustered near the pig farm. We're clustered. And the farm and the various farms. All right. Hey, guys, good job getting in. Hey, I, I guess my plan didn't work. <laughs> we just, now we're all in together. And yeah. So we're not, we're not going to. However, we're not on record with sleeping guards as coming as a group. That's important. Uh, yeah. I think as we should as, still. As far as they're concerned, we were three different people. I think we should still now take advantage of that fact that, like, as far as the record shows, a group of church officials never came to this town. You know? Right. So we can now spread out. Because our first uh, first thing we need to do is find information. We we, we need to find passions. We yeah. gotta we gotta find information. We need to figure out what's going on in this town and yeah. how a network of why, brigands. Why is everybody so tired? <laughs> a lot of sleeping. What and time What time of day is it, Spencer? It's about nine, maybe um, ten. Is there, is there a town like bell, like a church, like a tower? There is a church, but it doesn't have a bell. All right. We well, gotta get these people a bell. I'm gonna say, uh, you know. Like from this conversation for forward, unless peril demands it, mm. we don't acknowledge that we are part of the in same search of a passion bell. Uh, and we also, I'll be an emissary of the church, but you guys have to make up your own backstories. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm a, I'm a down at heel gambler. Down who, at uh, he- yeah, who's who's uh, ready for action. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to see you happy. And uh, diarrhea. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm a. Um, I'm. Uh, I. I work with uh, the church. <laughs> oh, I, I. You had one job. Cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Wait. Wait. What? The wrong song. God All damn. right. Oh, we'll, on, we'll, we'll pick up our. Yeah. Let's hear it for Spencer Crittenden and Rob Schraub. Josh. Androvsky, uh, wait, cock. What, what, what's his website's name? I have it in my text. It's got to be DSA dot something. It's called Left Coast, right? God damn it. Sounds we had right. one job. It's a podcast with Jeff Androvsky called Left Coast. Uh, Spencer Critton, your game master. I'm Jeff Davis, your controller. I'm way too tired to name everybody here, but let's hear it for church. <laughs> church, our guest, Chris Boreff. Hill. Who else is out there? Zach McKeever. Other people. Nolan Fabricus. Oh, Church is doing a dance with Rob Schraub. My name is Dance. Podcast Man. Robot I just Dance. distributed Robot my Dance. podcast. Everybody I did it without Robot the FCC's <laughs> permission, but you allowed for a government takeover of the internet, so this might be over. In the future, you won't be able to get to this site because... Let's hear it for your mayor, Dan Harmon, right. everyone. Let's hear it for Rob Schraub in the Zardoz chair. No, Davros. I, th- I meant Davros. <laughs> or Zardoz. Rob, what if Zardoz became Davros? How would that, how would that go? <laughs> and your, uh, your church is with the merchants. Cassandra Church takes those photos that you like so much. Yo. Dan, you want to do a little rap? Yo. 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 Ending rap. End of the show. Go out and grow. Tree to tree. Limb to limb. Put your roots in the ground and look at me. I'm a blue sky and I'm your father. Don't look at your mother. Don't bother. She's an impersonal cosmic force and I fucked her. Of course. Ooh. Ooh. Not in a disrespectful way. I was honored. 
Hey, Spencer, let's get together to do the dance right. Next week, Balderdash. We'll play a round of Balderdash. Thank you.